I'm here. I'm here! I am late! I was doing a Dr. Pepper run. Thank you very much. It's a jelly. Don't rat me out. Don't rat me out. <laughs> I am here. I am late, son. Yes, I am. I'm not chasing today. I am late, son. <laughs> How you guys doing? It is Friday. Oh, God. I've been running around. I had some uh, good lunch today. So I'm amped up. I'm ready to go. Play some uh, Fugitive Run. I'm excited. Hopefully you guys are excited as well. Let me check this. Why is that so low? Sorry, I had a technical difficulty on my end because I'm not paying attention here. Oh, there we go. There we are. That's better. All right. Well, uh, what is up, Legendary? Hopefully you're having a good day. A good Friday. So we are playing Fugitive Run today. Remember, we started out last week doing our Fugitive Run and now... Let me show you this a beautiful, beautiful game. Yes. We are going into... I played my main save, don't worry about that. A Fugitive Run! We have three hours and 30 minutes in there. Remember, it took us about two hours to find our ship. A, our first crashed ship. But now, we need to go around and find other crashed ships. That way we can build one. So we need to go build a ship! Need to get that going. Buy Monolith Dark for uh, Gek only. Advert. What are you talking about, Frybear? <laughs> uh, Walter. Good seeing you in the chat as well. Jim. Awesome seeing you. So hopefully. <sighs> I'm feeling lucky. I'm feeling good. Here it is right there. Boom. Let's go. Let's jump in there. Uh, build a bear. Nah, we want to build a ship. Exactly. And it looks like we're going to get a fighter. Actually, you know what? I haven't even tried this yet, guys. Let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Let's start a poll. And we are going to... We're going to ask, uh, what ship will Jason build? So, if you guys don't know, anybody who hasn't jumped into the game yet, you can only build a ship that you get pieces for, meaning... I have to find a specific type of ship. I cannot mix and match. I can't find a hauler engine and a uh, fighter wings and blah, blah. You have to find three of the same. So what ship do you think we're going to get lucky for and lucky and find? Um, so we can only have one of three. And then actually, you know what? We'll throw in a fourth option of no ship today because I might not find them all today. But let's see if I can get lucky enough to find a ship today. So we need three of the same. We need at least three. We can get more than that, but we need at least three of the same ship. That way we can tear it all apart and get the pieces. So we need to get the wings. We need to get the cockpit, which is like the, uh, the pilot's area, and the engine. So I have one. I have one fighter, but... Or, I mean, I guess, however, I need to find at least two more fighters. Only fighters. I can't find anything else. And nothing else will count. So if I find a shuttle, that doesn't matter. If I find a, uh, a hauler, then I'm out of luck. I need to find at least three of the same. Uh, Jason will only find shuttles. Eric, that is my big worry. Because, if you guys did not know, if you get down deep into the, uh, the stats on No Man's Sky... Shuttles are the most prevalent ship in the uh, game. So every system you go to, you have more shuttles than any other ship. However, after that, you have these specialties of the system. So if you're in a Viking system, you will find more fighters. So it goes shuttle, then, like if you're in a, a Viking system, fighters, and then everything else. So you will find more shuttles than anything else if you're looking for crashed ships. So that is a, a possibility, and you cannot build a shuttle. They don't allow you to build a shuttle, so I can't build one. I have to find another one that's not a shuttle. Is there another? Look at this! We have another drop pod. Well, we can open up drop pods in Fugitive Run. Let's get some more inventory room. Uh, scrap it. I mean, you can scrap it, but... But... I have to go to the space station and scrap it, and once I go to the space station, I have to leave. So if you don't know the rules of the fugitive run, overall, it's, hey, I'm a fugitive, I can't talk to aliens, and I have to escape the galaxy. If you want to know the details, they're down below in the description. However, I will say, in order to uh, build a ship, we have to go to the space station, 
But once you go into the space station, you have a limited thing you can talk to. You can only talk to one marketplace to get your reactor. And I can only go to the ship builder slash ship destroyer. And once I do that, I have to leave the system. I can't just do whatever and then keep going around. It's very limited. We're basically treating this like a role playing of if I go to the space station, it basically alerts the authorities and I have a limited amount of time to build and get the heck out of there. If I take too long, I'll be caught because I'm a fugitive. Let's see what we got here. I got my uh, sodium nitrate, but I need nanotubes and the antimatter housing. I can make that, right? Of course I need ferrite dust. Can I make my nanotubes? I can't do that either. Mother. Well, let's do that really quickly. I can get a ferrite dust. That's easy enough. That's easy enough. Oh, yeah, we were looking for bones in the last uh, stream. I forgot about that. Got to get those bones. Got to get those bones. Hello, Scar. And hello, Saz. Good seeing you in the chat. Very awesome. There is a chance for that solar ship to be in any system. Yeah, that is very true. That is very true. So there are crashes in there, but I mean, there is a hierarchy of there's more shuttles than anything else. And then if you have, depending on the system, like if you're in a, uh, in a, uh, in a, uh, Corvax system, you'll find more explorers, but then you have fighters, you have all the ships. It's just the number of them varies from system to system, depending on the system type and, or I guess the race of the system and the system type. Cause if you're in a pirate system, an outlaw system, you find more solars there compared to any other system too as well so it does depend on the system on how with the number of uh, ships you can find so the odds will change depending on which system you're in oh yeah we need uh, oxygen as well oh not oxygen carbon hello miss ducky diana the ducky yes hello and Heather Silver missed. I can't believe I almost missed you, Heather. Good seeing you in the chat as well. I completely despise the YouTube tech space limit. Ah, uh, you know, but you got it. You got to go with the limit, man. Got to only work with the tools they give you. All right, let's get in here. This will help with our uh, admin. Yep, there you go. That's what we were looking for. That one and that one. Let's upgrade our inventory. Um, down here first. So now we're getting a little bit squared off. So we need to do this one and then we'll do all the top row as well. So yeah, we're feeling, I'm feeling pretty confident. We have a whole bunch of bones to sell. We just need an outlaw to land for us. That way we can uh, sell them. The other thing I can do is I literally can just walk around and look for a uh, crash ship as well. It just takes a little bit longer to do that. And my inventory is full of bones. So it's not like I have... A ton of room. Actually, you know what? Do I have any space in here? I don't. I already put all the bones in here, too. Yeah, and I'm running out of room in my, uh... I'm running out of fuel. That's all right. Let's fly around a little bit. So, there is a way to look for crash ships with your, uh... Your radar right there. Crash ships come up as white squares. And every ship, I should say, every ship comes up as a white square. So... If there's just a random pilot flying around, you'll see a white square come up on the uh, radar. But a crashed ship as well will come up on the radar. So if you just fly low and slow, you can kind of look around a little bit. That's an antenna. We don't need that. Now, the one drawback is you can't really see the ground because, I mean, you know, my ship is in the way. If I fly in third person, I can see all around. So you get a little bit better visuals, but you have to be paying attention because there could be any crash ships there and you don't have your radar. So you're kind of out of luck on that. So I generally, I'll keep my eyes on the horizon, but I'm also really paying attention to my radar. I'm buying. There you go. Thank you so much for watching. You're freaking awesome. Thank you, Streamlabs, for uh, saying that. Saz says, uh, 2,350 hours of gameplay, and I did not know about the white square trick used to find crashed ships on the ship radar. Dude, Saz, it, I would never have known it unless, you know, doing fugitive runs, doing playing the game in a weird way forces you to kind of pay attention to things you normally wouldn't even know about or care about. Like, I normally, Saz, I, I'm always flying in third person. I would never would have known about the radar thing. 
but you slowly pick up on these things, you know, as you're going through. Like, just, I didn't know, third person, your backpack has your life support. You're pretty good. And your hazard protection. Rules question. There. If you find five glyphs and a portal, do you still need to build a ship? Obi-Wan Kenny, thank you for the super chat. Very much appreciated on that. And I would say yes. I would say yes, because you still need to travel. Even if you use the glyphs, you still have to travel to the center. So you technically would need a ship to get out of the... Uh, that last uh, s uh, system, because if you use the if you get the five glyphs, you just get to a s uh, system near the galaxy's edge. You still need to go to the center, which means you have to travel. So yes, I would say absolutely you need one. And thank you so much for the super chat, man. I did add speak to t or text to speech in there, so you should if you do a super chat. That way, I don't have to read it every time. I'm gonna try to be quiet, but. You know, you can't time those things perfectly. Sometimes I'll be in the middle of a sentence uh, when the uh, when the speech comes up, and it might need to. Oh, oh! There's a planetary archive. We can't. We cannot go to planetary archive. So I almost got excited and went over there. Nope. Can't do that. Can't do that. We're a fugitive. We're running from the law. But you'll notice. See, look at all the ships that are flying in. They're white dots right there. So it marks any ship. So these are all flying. We know that they're flying to go to the space uh, or the planetary archive, so we can't use any of these. But you'll notice some of them, if you see one that doesn't move, then you know for sure that's the one. And then Michael, or yeah, Michael Lines, thank you so very much for being a member for nine months, dude. Very much appreciated. Saying hello, Jason, and hello, chat. Thank you so much, and hello back to you, Michael. But yeah, so that's a that's the easy way to see it, and it doesn't discriminate between any ship at all. So it could have a it could be a crashed ship that has a pilot, it could be a flying ship, whatever. Any ship will be marked with a white square. So once we get it, it doesn't mean that it's a crashed one that we can use. It just means there's a ship around. Isn't there a, uh, a station that is only at the planetary archive? A uh, guild? I don't think it's only at the archive. Oh, wait a minute. We have a crash freighter here. I think you can find it on the space station as well now, uh, Saz. Um, if you go to a space station now, they actually have the guild envoy. And the guild envoy will change depending on the system. So it might be at the space station. It might not be. But as far as I know, I'm, I'm trying to think of it. They have the, um, the nanite. They have the... If you're talking about, like, the artifact stuff, then yes, that's only at Planetary Archives, but it's only for artifacts. So, like, if I pick up the, um, a, a, a rare bone or something like that, I can go to the Planetary Archive and trade it out. I think that's the only specialty store that is at the, uh, or specialty desk that is at the Planetary Archive, I think. I might be wrong on that. But I believe that's the only one. Like, the, uh, Guild Envoys are on the space stations, and now they change. Sometimes you'll find the Mercenaries Guild. Sometimes you'll find the uh, Merchants Guild or the Explorers Guild or whatever. So they do change. Or I, I shouldn't say they change. They are randomized to each system. One system might have a Mercenary. One system might ha another system might have the, uh, the Merchant. I'm trying to see if there's anything good. In oh yeah, wait a minute. Oh, my inventory is getting full already. Crap, I need someone to land for me. That way I can sell them my stuff. Let me sell you my stuff. Get out of there. Polyfiber again. Okay. When do you guys land? I know we're close to a uh, trading outpost and so or a planetary archive. So in general, they won't land near a planetary archive. They might. It's like a rare occasion, but they might. Uh, Jason keeps uh, want, making me want to play No Man's Sky in ways I normally don't. It's, it's, I think it's really, really fun. So it depends. And again, the rules are down below for my fugitive run. But if you have a different way, like you say, hey, I actually I like it, but I want to play on normal mode. Do it. Play it. The, play the game how you want to play it. Make it fun for you. So some people don't like playing in like permadeath mode. That's totally fine. Do it. Do it. Just play it like that. Kind of add your own rules. Or maybe you think it's not hard enough. Maybe you could say, oh, I actually, you should have to build two ships. Or maybe you have to do this or that or whatever. You could modify the rules however you want to. I'm just playing it this way, but it doesn't mean you have to. So 
I put them down there so you guys can kind of get an idea of the rules that I play by. And we try to go by the spirit of the rules. So if it doesn't feel like, like if there's a little bit of a gray area, like the uh, five glyphs thing, then yeah, we, we can kind of bend the rules a little bit or maybe modify them if it just doesn't work. Because it's all about having fun. All about having fun. Uh, fun is watching you cause trouble. Well, I mean, that is what I do, old explorer. That is what I do. Guys, I am seeing, uh, the... I don't know if you guys follow my, uh, or if you watch the, uh, Valheim streams. If you don't, every Monday we do a Valheim stream. And Thursday with Heather Silvermist over on, uh, Twitch. We do a Valheim stream with Heather Silvermist. But... The Valheim Twitter account has been tweeting some stuff about, uh, Ashlands. I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to spoil it because I know some people, they don't want to hear about it. They just want to go in fresh. But the fact that they're tweeting about it more and more makes me think that the Ashlands update might be coming pretty quick. All of a sudden now, they're, like, firing off some tweets. So, does that mean that the update's coming soon? I hope. I hope that update's coming for Valheim. Oh, man, I can't wait to jump in and play that. I am so excited for it. And the, um, the big, uh, question usually is, Carmen, thank you so much for the five gifted memberships, Carmen. 070, 0070, you, Carmen. Very much appreciated. And hopefully, Carmen, are you playing Stellar Blade that comes out later this month? I think next week. Stellar Blade. It is... Not quite like a Dark Souls Elden Ring kind of game, but it has that same feel to it, Carmen. Oh, I can't wait to jump into Stellar Blade. It, it has like, it's a a little bit different. It's more action versus like uh, Elden Ring where it's more about like stamina driven. There's no stamina in Stellar Blade, but it plays very similar to like a, a Souls game. I can't wait for that to come out. It is going to be awesome. Oh, we just went over the South Pole. We just switched to North. Okay. Well, I guess we're heading north now, but... Oh, seven to you, Carmen. Very much appreciated on that. Uh, yeah. Carmen is awesome. Yes, thank you for your support. Yes. Uh, like and subscribe. Thank you, Carol. Very much appreciated on that. But yeah, so... I'm really, really excited for Ashlands. And uh, my train of thought before I, I got all crazy. Wait a minute. I see, I see a square. I almost flew right by it. You see that? There's a square over here. Where is this thing at? I see a square. This is this a crash ship? So it's a crash ship. It has a pilot. So you know how you can tell if a crash ship has a pilot? We're going to pause here for a second. Well, number one, you can see the pilot right here. So I can tell there's a pilot there. But number two, there should be a distress beacon. If there's no, like, round orb... That means that's a, it's a crashed ship that has a pilot with it. So that's the first thing you look for is, is there an orb? Is there a round thing? If there is, awesome. If not, look for this alien right here. You jerk. I want your ship. I want your ship, sir. Or ma'am. I can't tell from this far away. I mean, it's, it is a shuttle, so we can't do anything with it anyway. We could scrap it and make money, but... We can't really, we can't make a ship out of that because we can't make shuttles. And then Carmen uh, with a super chat as well. Carmen, thank you so very much. Saying, very cool. Enjoy your weekend. All will enjoy your weekend too. Hopefully you're getting something good to eat, Carmen. Today I got a barbecue. So I'm trying to eat more meat in my diet and take out a lot of sugar. And so today we went for barbecue. Oh, so good. So good. So hopefully you get some good, yeah, something good. good, Carmen. Some good food. Very cool. Enjoy your weekend, all. Yes! Uh, hi, hello, Scar. Okay, so yeah, so this one is not a crash ship that we can claim, and it's a shuttle. So that's double. Double, we don't care. So let's just keep going, and eventually it'll fade off the radar, but you can see on the radar, white square. And there it goes. There's another building. We can do this as well. We can look for, like, uh, drop pods. That way we can... Oh, yes! Like that! We can upgrade our uh, inventory. Do I have enough space to do this? I do. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful. Here we go. Easy peasy. Let's get in here and get some more space in our inventory. 
see, this is a good, uh, this is a good uh, fugitive start. We're getting our inventory maxed out a little bit. Liking that. Okay, let's put it down here. Beautiful. I am going to run out of launch fuel, though, so I got to be careful about stopping every five minutes because uh, launch fuel gets expensive in fugitive runs. Oh, uh, Pickwin says, I make barbecue just as time consuming as No Man's Sky. Dude, I don't have the, the talent for making good barbecue. Like, I can barbecue, but we're talking like if you're talking about a good dry rub with some really good sauce and smoking it for hours and hours, I am not that talented. So I go to professionals to get my, my barbecue. I could, I can make it. It wouldn't be as good. It would be decent. It would be okay. You sauce it up and it would be pretty good. But you go to a professional, oh, man, you go to some good place that they do it all the time. That is, man, my mouth is watering still. I just had it like an hour ago. I'm still, now I'm getting myself hungry. Oof. Another drop pod? No, it's not. So, and another benefit to doing this on a moon, let me show you. We're on a moon right now. So this is a moon. It is a, uh, oh, it doesn't tell you what a moon is. Okay, there we go. So it's a moon. It's a smaller, uh, it's a smaller planetary body. So even just by this, you can tell how small it is compared to a planet. They both have the same number of buildings on them, but, or I guess, however, the planet has more of a surface area to spread the, the buildings around. So you'll have a huge wide areas between buildings because it's way bigger. However, a moon is very, very small. And so you can, you, you only have so much room for all the buildings. So you're putting them really close together. So you don't have to travel as far between all the buildings. So that is a big benefit to uh, searching on a moon. It's also very small, so you can travel around it pretty quickly. So we can do some, uh, some runs around from north to south or east to west or whatever. Oh, no, not all barbecue has sugar in it. Well, I mean, that's true. It depends on the sauce and depends on your rub, whatever you're going to put on there. But I will say the good barbecue generally has some really sweet sauce on it, at least for me. I don't like the hot. I don't like the heat. I want the uh, sweet. So I want some good, like, sweet sauce. Oh, get me some, uh, maybe it do me some teriyaki on there. Mmm. Teriyaki chicken, man. I'll, I'll do some grilled uh, teriyaki chicken all day. Anyway, so it doesn't have to have sweetness to it. You don't. You can go with like stevia. They're okay. They don't taste as good as like the traditional like sugary uh, barbecue sauce, sweet barbecue sauce. But man, now I'm getting myself all amped up over here. Uh, Craver, every almost everything has sugar in it. You're not. That's not a lie, man. If you're go, if you're getting. Mm, a lot of things in the supermarket if you go down any go to, you pick any aisle just walk down the aisles and you'll find out everything that comes in a box generally has sugar added to it any drink any juices oh they have added sugar is what they call it now <laughs> uh but yeah so you just if you're trying to cut out sugar and try to dry out like uh my wife and i we treat it like uh, like being an alcoholic because there, we get on a sugar kick and we'll go, we'll overdose on sugar. And so, like, okay, we'll take a few, like a week or two to kind of dry out and kind of get back to normal. <laughs> so you go through and you just, basically you're buying produce and meats. Nothing that comes uh, packaged, basically, <laughs> because they, they put sugar in almost anything, at least in America. Maybe it's different in, in Europe and like around the world, but in America, we love to put sugar in everything. <laughs> Even bread. Even bread has sugar in it. Uh, stay on the outer aisles. Yep. Go around the produce. Go around the, uh, the cold sections. Even the freezer section, though. If you're in the freezer section, you're going to get a lot of sugar in there, too. And I, and I guarantee you, because I've been, uh, I've tried to do no sugar, and I'm on my day four of no sugar. I'm starting to get a headache. And I'm like, dude, that's a sugar withdrawal because I had way too much sugar before. And so, yeah, it's one of those deals where you don't realize how used to it your body gets until you don't do it for a while. And all of a sudden you get headaches and you're like, why? It's just sugar. Sugar will mess you up if you eat too much of it. Anyway, I'm not a doctor. So take that with a grain of salt. 
Or don't. Sodium's bad for you, too. Um. Lots of sugar and salt in boxed items in the USA. Yep, no doubt. No doubt. And so, yeah, it's generally just like the general rule is if you if you can't find it in nature, don't don't eat it. Meaning if it's a vegetable, you can eat it. If it's a meat, you can eat it. But if it's a cake, if it comes in a box that's pre made for you, probably not. You know, if it's a frozen uh, chicken breast, they probably put some mixture of uh, seasonings on it to make it taste better for you. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, too much salt is bad. You do need salt. You do need salt. So everything is not bad for you. It's just bad for you in a lot of quantities. And I think, I mean, speaking from my own experience, growing up in, you know, middle America, the portions that we are used to in America are not normal portions. You think, oh, that's just normal size. And it's like, no, <laughs> it's not. That is not normal size. That is like America sized, which is a whole different scale. So yeah, you could eat, all this stuff is okay to eat, just not as much as we think is normal. You know, you don't need a, a two liter of soda, <laughs> even though uh, when I worked at uh, Walmart, I'm surprised I don't have diabetes. I knock on wood. I don't have it. Got my blood test. We're all good. But when I worked at uh, Walmart overnights, I did it for uh, I worked at Walmart for 15 years overnights. That was 10 o'clock at night till seven in the morning. I would literally drink a two liter of Mountain Dew overnight. So over my entire shift. I would have it on my first break. I would buy a two liter before I went to work. I would drink it on my, I would drink some on my first break at, uh, at midnight. I would drink some more on my lunch, which was at 3 p.m. or 3 a.m. And then we had a break at 5 a.m. So we get two breaks and a lunch. And I would drink a whole two liter overnight. At the same time, w before my shift, I would drink a, a Rockstar energy drink or a Monster or some kind of energy drink to wake myself up. I was probably getting hundreds and hundreds of grams of sugar every day. I am baffled that I don't have diabetes. Baffled. <laughs> like, there is no way I have di don't have diabetes. Like, if I would have told my doctor that, they would have double checked me. Like, what? Are you sure? Let me check your blood again. Because <laughs> you should have it. You should. Oh, there is some right there. But yeah, I mean, if I, I put it up to I was I was working a physical job, so I was burning off. But still, that's not good. You do not drink. Do not do that. That's not good for you. Uh, Energy drinks are the grossest crap ever. Crazy chaos. How dare you? I love energy drinks. Now, I, they're not I'm not saying they're healthy for you, but they are literally made to taste wonderful so you can drink them like they are. They are, uh, they are scientifically made to taste good, so you get addicted to them. They pump it full of sugar and caffeine. Holy cow, man. <laughs> so, yeah. They gen they make it to where it tastes good. Why would they make it taste bad? No, they taste wonderful. They're not good for you, not good for your heart, not good for your blood, not- <laughs> But they taste good. Um, we need some, uh, of these. And I am guilty. I still drink energy drinks to this day. I'll have a, I'll have one once in a while. You know, I, I have it as my treat. I'll have a Dr. Pepper, even though it's literally just sugar water. There's no nutrients in a, in a soda pop. But they taste good, and that's what, they're made to taste good. Are you gonna stop for me? No? You suck. I want your fighter. I need another fighter. But yeah, they're made to taste good. That's what they're for. <laughs> they're packed full of sugar. That's why a lot of our stuff is made out of sugar, because it tastes good. Um, boom, and boom. Uh, energy drinks can't compete with my girl, Crystal. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, oh, Crystal M, yeah. I do know about that, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know, know about that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, do you still have just one ship? Yes, well, technically I still have two. So I have the, 
I have my, uh, my current fighter, and then I have the, um... I have the starter ship. Now, we can't use it because we're on a fugitive run. This ship, the pillar is, uh, bugged. It is being watched, so we can't use it. However, I'm hoping to get the advantage of, as long as I don't destroy it, I can call it in. So, technically, I only need to find three ships. So, if I find three fighters, I can destroy them, and I'll be left with my pillar. I won't use it. But I can build my own with the three pieces instead of having to find four because you need one that's not destroyed. Anyway. Technically, I have two ships, but I can't use one. Uh, not only does the sugar taste good, it also extends the uh, shelf life. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that there are benefits to doing it, and that's why they do it, but... The, the main reason they're doing it is not to be healthy. <laughs> they're not putting sugar in there because it's a health additive. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, so in Is there a ship? Oh, it's just the one that's flying away, isn't it? Is that the one flying away, or is this the one over here? Is this a crash ship? No, I think that's the one flying away, because we're not getting any closer to it. Ah, oh, see? That's why I hate that radar! It picked up the one that was flying away. So I can't tell if it's... Just fly in a different direction. That way I know it's you. Okay, there it goes. Disappeared. Okay. Anyway. And I'm not saying you should never do any of this stuff because I also believe that you can make your own decisions. As soon as you become an adult, if you want to drink 10 gallons of soda every day, you have every right to do that. However, it's not healthy for you. It's not good for you. I'm sure it'll be very, very detrimental to your health. But if you want to do that, more power to you. Want to, you want to smoke cigarettes, do whatever you want. If you're an adult and you know the consequences, you know that you know, uh, drinking a soda is not good for you. It's not healthy for you. But you want to do it anyway, go ahead. It's your life. I'm not going to tell you what to do. So yeah, I think you should do what you want. And if someone, just like alcohol, some people cannot handle it. Some people have, they get, uh, they, uh, they overdo it. And they know, okay, I can't handle that stuff, so I can't do it. All right. I think for a lot of people, they don't treat uh, sugar or caffeine the same way, and we probably should. And just say, hey, look, you know, I love sugar. I really, really like it, so I probably should just not mess with it, because I, uh, I can't stop doing it. Oh my god, there's another- is this the same guy? I don't think so, is it? It feels like the same guy. I know, we're heading north, so we should be okay. That should be a different ship. Either- either way, it was a shuttle and it had a pilot, so we can't use that one. That was weird, though. That's the same setup. I don't think it was the same, uh, location, though, because we keep- we're heading north now, so we should be okay. Uh, bounty hunt for a uh, job of the hut to finance my bets. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Gunboat says, regardless of your age, never eat aluminum. You will sheet metal. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. 100%. You will sheet metal. Uh, oh, that probably was because I'm going south. Did I go over the North Pole? Or the South Pole. Well, we're not... Okay, fine. You know what? We're sticking to one direction. Now I'm getting confused here. So we were going north. We went over the North Pole, I assume. Now we're heading south. Just pick a direction and go with it, Jason. So now we're heading south. I got confused there. I was like, wait a minute. What's going on? I keep going over the pole. Uh, each planet rates, rotates between three ships, which is kind of sad. It's difficult to find a bunch of options. Yeah, I wish it was more varied, but I mean, at least we have them. And they did, um, I think it was with the living ship up. There is a grave. There is a grave. There is a grave. We do need that. So thankfully I was looking at the screen when that happened. 
So we need five glyphs, which, which means we need five graves. We already found one. This is number two. This is our second grave. So this will be uh, glyph number two. So we just need three more. There we are. Yep. And we get a uh, upgrade out of it. So we got a aeration membrane for water. All right. You know what? It's a it's a hazard upgrade. Just doesn't matter for now because you know. But we got one. All right, we got two now technically. So let's keep heading south. That's lucky. Lucky. I'm liking it. We already got two. And yep, always with the uh, left turns. Well, I mean, yeah, I always mess up. I go left. I favor my left. And I, re I honestly, I think it's because my monitor is on my left. So I'm looking left. It's like when, you, when, you, uh, when you're uh, driving a motorcycle, when you're riding a motorcycle. If you turn your head left, you just instinctively, your body leans that way. And so I'm looking left. So I'm instinctively, I'm turning left. <laughs> At least that's how I'm going to justify it in my brain. Uh, Christopher Bain says, I can't tell you how much I wish that little planet map in the center of the ship updated while you were on the planet. Atmosphere, it would be nice to have a visual HUD for where you are on the planet. I wish, dude. That would be awesome. I think that might be outside the, uh, the capabilities of the engine, though. Because... A lot of it is uh, procedurally generated, so even the game doesn't know what's outside of, I think, an 800 meter radius. So the game just draws in and loads in anything within an 800 meter radius. And not everything, like the grass sometimes will only pop up every, I think, 200. Uh, so that's why when you use the target sweeper, it'll say item too far away, and if you walk like 100 feet, all of a sudden something will pop up because it's generating constantly. It's procedurally generating it. And it doesn't know what's out there. Let's see. Nope. Uh, so yeah, I think there's a limitation on that. And so it's fast about generating it. It's pretty fast about loading it in, quote unquote, but it still is a limitation with the, uh, like you see how the, uh, the ground is adjusting. So it knows where the ground should be. And it's like, oh, sorry, we got to fade that in a little bit. Dun, 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 dun. How rare is the exo uh, suit? Uh, what do you mean by like the X upgrades? Uh, they're not that rare. You can go to a, an outlaw station and buy them, or like if an outlaw lands near you, you can buy them off that person. Uh, so it's not really rare. If you're talking about the rarity of good ones, then I don't know the percentage on that. Zane might know the percentage on that, on uh, what, what your chances of getting a better than S-Class upgrade. It's very low. I will say that. In my experience, I've, I've opened up hundreds and hundreds of the, uh, the X the black market upgrades and it is a rare thing to find something better than s you could find a lot of good ones like a's maybe an s class like the same level as an s class you'll find almost you know a good percentage of the time but finding something better than s is real hard and then shadows den gaming thank you for becoming a member on the channel very much appreciated oh seven to you you are now a fellow traveler uh, where do you find the Mercenaries Guild? Alex, go to the space station. You should see the symbol, which is a coin with a knife through it, at the space station. Now, keep in mind, every space station is going to be different. So you might go to a space station that has a, uh, a, uh, a Merchant's Guild or an Explorer's Guild, and they'll have different designs. They'll have different lo logos on them. So you might need to go to a few different uh, space stations before you run into the Mercenaries Guild. But it'll be on the space station. Once you get out of your ship, go to the right-hand side. The right-hand side of the uh, space station on the second level, you'll see a big desk with a big symbol above it. And just look for the Mercenary symbol. Again, it's a coin, like a gold coin with a knife going through it. That is the mercenaries, uh, guild symbol.
Get up a little bit. Uh, I guess the it's programmed, but not generated to appear uh, until then. I take it. Yes, Visa. So not all the uh, components of the game communicate with each other. It seems like so. All the uh, all the the engine itself on the server has generated every planet. Every planet is known to the server. However, they haven't. They basically have cut off that knowledge from the other parts, the discovery service, the uh, the, the some of the core elements of the engine itself, the target sweeper. It doesn't know if no one has ever been to a system. It doesn't know what's in that system. The uh, the core of the generation knows. Oh yeah, this this system has. One cold planet, one hot planet, one toxic planet. It knows that. But the discovery system and other pieces don't. And so it treats it like you found it when it's been like that the whole time. It's just no one has seen it. Oh, look at trading outposts. We don't need that though. Let's fly away from that. And of course, there's ships on it. Yep, see? Ships flying in here. Let's get out of here before we get caught. So yeah. There, it feels like, and I mean, again, I'm speculating on all of this stuff. I have no idea. I've not worked on this game whatsoever. I have not torn into the game files. I did not build any of it, so I don't know. Absolutely. But my guess from playing a lot of it and just the things I've seen come out of it is that, yeah, if there's always, like, when you go to the galaxy map, if you go to the, like, here, I can show you. You go to a galaxy map. No one has ever been to this system, but it knows there's a Viking. It's a Viking system. How does it know that? No one's ever been there, right? Because when it generated the map, it knows this system is a Viking system. If you go into it, it knows it has all these planets in there. So it has, let's look at it. It has one, two, three, four, five planets. One of those planets has moons. So it, it's generated the system. The system is made already. It's just that there's another half of the game that's the discovery half that doesn't know any of this stuff. Doesn't know what it is. No one's ever been there. No one's ever... No one has ever uploaded it to the servers, so the servers don't know. And that's where, like, the target sweeper is kind of involved. Target sweeper only knows what's immediately around you, not the whole planet. That kind of stuff. And I don't know why it's made that way. I don't know if that's beneficial for it or if that's just the way to make it easier for it's not for it to have a discovery service so you can have scans and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. Uh, makes sense. I forgot the keyword being generated, not created. Yeah, that's true. It's generated, not created. Yes. So it's not like a lot of people think that all these systems don't exist at all until you fly there. No, no, they're in there. And there is a the part of the game engine that's generated it all already. It's it's there. It's just not discovered and it's not been found. And so it allows you to go there and find it, and no one else has seen it, so you don't know. None of us know what's there. The discovery system doesn't know what's there. But the game at a core level already knows. Oh yeah, this is a planet. This this system has five planets in it, blah blah blah. It has all this stuff already. Oh yeah, we're going south. We're going south. So it knows, you know, it has algorithms. It knows that, okay, this planet has to have this many buildings and it spreads them out. It's already generated all that kind of stuff. So it's there. It's just loading in and being found for the first time by us. Anyway, and that's just my generalized knowledge of it. But I, again, I did not make the game. I have no idea. You'd have to ask Sean Murray and the, the team at Hello Games and they could probably get very nerdy about it and tell you all how everything works together and why it does. But you kind of get a feel after playing the game for a while. You know that there are dependencies. Like, if this thing happens, this other thing will happen as well. And that kind of stuff. You know that certain systems are linked together. Or not linked. Uh, Jason, is Jason searching for crash ships? I am! And we're doing it in a fugitive run, which means... We cannot buy any charts. We cannot talk to any regular aliens. We can talk to outlaws, you know, other fugitives, but we cannot uh, talk to regular, like normal aliens, only outlaws. And so what we're doing is we're trying to find crash ships because 
In order to leave this system, we have to build our own ship. Now, I know that means we have to talk to some uh, aliens on the space station, but we're treating that like a crash and grab, uh, a smash and grab. We're gonna get up there, do it as fast as possible, because as soon as we talk to an alien on the space station, the timer starts, and we have to we have to get out of there as quickly as possible, so we don't get caught by the authorities. Because we're a fugitive, we're role playing as a fugitive, and so we had to get the heck out of there as soon as we do it. So that's why we're trying to get all of our stuff first, because as soon as we go to the space station, we also have to make our ship and then leave the system. That way they cannot follow us. Because in this kind of a challenge, this kind of a run, we are, we are saying that a built ship, a custom built ship is unregistered, and so they cannot track us. And so the only way to leave the system is to get an unregistered ship. That way there is no way for the, them to follow us. Dun, dun, dun. That's not a build or not a crash ship, but it is a oh, it's a market. We can't go there either But yeah, in, in general, we're just trying to avoid any contact with re regular aliens So we don't get caught because we are a fugitive on the run We're uh, Harrison Ford trying to get the heck out of here Alejandro says Jason. How you doing today? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. We're doing a fugitive run playing some no man's sky I had some barbecue earlier. Mmm. I love barbecue Love it, love it, love it. Where are we at? Yeah, just, just look at the radar, Jason. Just look at the radar. I'm also trying to find graves. So... One of the faster ways to get to the center of the galaxy is by using the big portal, the big glyphs, to, to go to the center. However, in this challenge, we're seeing that you can use it, you're allowed to, but you need five glyphs before you can do it. Like, you could do it with one, however, that's too easy, so we're gonna make it five. You have to have five before you can use a big portal to get to the center of the galaxy. And so we need to find five graves, and that makes it even more difficult because we can't talk to travelers. We can't talk to them and ask them where they came from because we got we would get caught. So we have to find them out in the wild. So that's another thing we got to do. Um, why he can't? What do you mean, Walter? Says I was thinking the same thing. It was a crime that your fugitive was wait is wanted for. Uh, the crime is we would not eat pineapple pizza. Pineapple pizza is required to, um... Is, pineapple pizza in No Man's Sky is required to graduate. And we refused to, and we broke the law. We did not graduate out of, uh, traveler school. So, now we're on the run. We're a free traveler, but we didn't actually complete the, uh, the terms to, to become a free traveler. So they're hunting us down. Uh, I'm playing the first expedition right now. It's brutal. Scuba Steve! I like the first one. Are you talking about the Pioneer Expedition? I like that one. So that one, it was definitely longer. Like, I can't... I wish... I mean... That's what she said. I wish that they would let us replay the old expeditions. Because now that we've done speedruns, I would love to go back to the Pioneer Expedition. Because I remember... When we w when I went through it the original time, it took me like 20 hours to do. It was like a long... There was... There, we weren't speedrunning at the time, so I have no idea if we could speedrun it or not. I just remember it was a long, brutal expedition. We were like, dude, this is awesome! This is like a whole nother thing! And we thought all of the expeditions were gonna be like that. But they really quickly made them really short. <laughs> so... I have a feeling they got a, a lot of feedback from players saying, look, this thing, I like it, but it's too long, dude. You need to spend hours and hours finishing this thing off. I don't like that. And so they made them shorter. So now we can run them into an hour. Whereas back in the day, the first one I remember, it took like 20 hours to do. It was insane. Now, is it going to take us 20 hours now? I don't think so. Maybe? I don't think so, though, because now we know tricks and we know how to do that. So it probably wouldn't take us 20 hours if it happened today. 
But I would love to try. I want them. I want uh, them to let us, to allow us to do it. I want to see the original Pioneer Expedition. And I mean, I know I could do it with mods on, and stuff like that on my uh, on my PC. I could do it. I could just modify my game and get it done. But I want it to. I want it to be natural because I'm always afraid I'm gonna I'm gonna corrupt my save or something. I don't want to do that either. Um, I have not played the Normandy Expedition yet, dude. I like the Normandy one as well. And th that one was even cooler because we didn't know what it was. So, when the Normandy Expedition came out, we didn't know what the end rewards were. They were all encrypted. So we were like, what the heck is this? They didn't call it the Normandy Expedition. They called it... I can't remember what the second expedition was. It wasn't Normandy. It was something else. And we didn't know what it was. We just knew there was a reward and we didn't know what it was. I mean, eventually everyone got into the game files and we figured it out. But if you didn't go dig into the game files, you would not never have known that, oh, we're going to get the Normandy. I think we didn't know for, I think, a week. Like, they put the expedition out. It was all encrypted. And we didn't know anything for a week. And then it kind of broke out. And so they put out the trailer for the Normandy. And you're like, oh, okay. That's cool. Beachhead. Yes, that's what it was. Beachhead. It was the Beachhead uh, uh, update. Yes, that one, it was so, it, that was cool in the time. So now you know, oh, they'll just call it the Normandy Expedition or whatever, the Mass Effect Expedition. And so it kind of takes the fun out of it. What the heck? Are we next to a, um, oh, we're right next to a, uh, split. <laughs> I was wondering, I was like, wait a minute, there's five ships? What the crap? It's because there's a training outpost right there. Am I going over the same spots over and over again? It feels like it, doesn't it? It feels like we're just going over and over again. If we cross the North Pole again, I'm going to just start going east or west or whatever. I'm not going to go north and south because I keep going over the same spots because I'm feeling like we didn't go to that uh, that crash freighter because that was all brand new, but I'm getting suspicious. Anyway, it was really cool at the time because we didn't know. Now it kind of ruins a little bit of the surprise because... We don't know. We or we do know now. It's gonna be the you know Normandy expedition or whatever. Even if they call it Beachhead, we'll know. <laughs> so it kind of sucks away that little bit of surprise we had. Hey, just subscribed. I didn't notice I was subbed, but now I am. Nice hunter. Very awesome. Uh, Saz says Jason, you are going in circles. Either go towards the planet rings. Or over the horizon or away from it. I know I need to do that, Saz. You know what? We'll do that. We'll go towards that planet right there. That's what we're going towards. Screw it. I'm going in circles, Saz. <laughs> I keep... I'm using north and south, but I keep going over the pole, which means I get confused on if I'm trying to go north or south again, because if you go over the north pole, your north direction turns in the south because you're past the north pole. So instead, I should just do this. <laughs> Let's go towards a planet. So now we know that's where we're heading, the planet. Another wreckage and... Oh, that's nothing. My inventory should be pretty full at this point. Yep, we're getting there. We're getting there. So I can't pick up very much. Anyway, maybe I should get out of my ship and just walk. Because the other big thing is outlaws will not land unless... You are on foot. Like, if I'm flying around, I can't buy someone's ship if I'm flying. They might trade with me. Like, if I go through and I pulse it drive through this, like this, they might hit me, you know, they might, you know, I might be able to sell some stuff. And maybe that's what we'll do. We'll sell some stuff. But most of what we're doing this is just to make room in my inventory because I have a whole bunch of stuff in here. Yeah, see, so I got bones in here. I got this. So we can trade with the outlaw traders, but they have to, they have to talk to me. That's the, that's the downside is they have to talk to me. Oh, I don't have any, Ooh, I'm going to have to stop and get some of that. So let's move these over to my suit. That way I have room for it. Nobody wants to trade with me. Oh, come on. No one wants to trade with me. That's an undiscovered planet. It's a full size planet though. And it's charred. If it was an airless planet, we would be in business. Fungal planet. Irradiated moon. Let's go 
towards this. Maybe we'll get someone to trade with us. Thank you. I watched you for two years. Nice. Very awesome, Hunter. Very appreciated on that. How many crashed ships on a planet? Oh, Alejandro. If I had to guess, it has to be around a hundred. Maybe over the maybe over a hundred. So they're all over the place. But you gotta think. Uh, an average size planet. They are smaller and larger, so it's gonna be different. But an average size planet takes about 16 hours to walk across. If you just started walking on a planet and went all the way around to come back to where you started, it would take a around 16 hours. Again, if you're on a moon, it'll be shorter. If you're on a larger planet, it's gonna be longer, but about 16 hours. So that surface area, there are, there's room for hundreds of buildings, hundreds of everything. So they're there, you just have to find them. <laughs> so, and it's very difficult if you're just scouring randomly. Like if I, if I had charts, I'd be able to just fire them off and find a whole bunch of them. But you know, I don't have any charts. There are way better and faster ways to do it than just flying low and slow. <laughs> we need to get some uh, fuel. <laughs> I'm about to run out of fuel. And nobody wants to trade with me. What the heck is going on here? Are we not hitting this thing? There we go. Gimme all of that tritium. Why are you in there? And we got silver. Silver, gold, and tritium. Let's do it. We need that we need that tritium for fuel. Yeah, he is the king of turn left turns. I am, dude. I am. And if you're a new viewer, like if you haven't watched me before, we've been doing fugitive runs and like no starter ship runs for a few years now. And I had multiple series where I was stuck on a planet trying to, uh, trying to find a crashed ship on the, on the planet on foot. And I would go for hours and then realize, oh, I've already done this building. I would go up to a building and it would already be opened. And I would realize, oh, I walked in a big circle and came back to where I started. I was like, oh my god, are you serious? <laughs> so yeah, and I've done that multiple times. For whatever reason, I like to go left. I like to go left. Here we are. There we go. I know, I only got two. I know, I only got two. Oh, great! It's an outlaw, so I, I can talk to him. I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna bargain with you, buddy. Pirate King! PIRATE KING! Well, we're going to fight the Pirate King, I guess. Oh, Lord, don't die. I have shields, right? Oh, thank God I do have shields. <laughs> I was just, I just thought about that after I told him no. So we are playing on extreme. Oh, that's not so bad. I thought it was going to be, I thought he was going to have better shields than this. So that wasn't so bad. Yeah, I got the pirate transponder, so now I need to go to the mercenaries guild and turn that baby in. But I can't. So I have to just sell it, basically. Yeah, I just gotta sell it. Oh my god, I have no inventory. See, this is why- I Oh god. This is why I wanted to sell stuff. I have no room in my inventory now. <laughs> so I can sell it to an outlaw. So generally, what you want to do with this awesome new pirate transponder is turn it in at the mercenaries guild, because You'll gain mercenary rank for it. But you can also sell it for money. I'll get 85,000 for it, so not a big deal. I just, you know, if I can't talk to him because I'm an outlaw, I can't talk to the mercenaries guild. Uh, Kosovi says, why not use the charts? Because I'm not allowed to talk to any normal uh, aliens there, Kosovi. Cannot talk to anybody else because I'm a fugitive. I'm on the run. So I cannot use charts. I cannot talk to any regular aliens. I cannot use a trade terminal or else I'll get caught. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to uh, pulse drive between planets 
So hopefully an outlaw will come in and trade with me, do an illegal trade. I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping for, because I have no room in my inventory whatsoever now. So please, random occurrence, you'll randomly get traders that will uh, try to do a black market trade with you. And that's what I'm trying to run into. I don't know why I can't. Oh, God. Yeah, I have nothing. What about a trade rocket? I wish I had the recipe for that. So, theoretically, you might be able to get rid of it. Now, it, it goes to the trading outpost, or it goes to the, the space station, which means it is communicating with the trade, uh, the trades, or the uh, space station. So, it could count as going to a trader. So, rocket might be off bounds. However, I couldn't even try it anyway, because you can't get blueprints, because I cannot go to the space anomaly again. There are there there are normal uh, travelers there that would rat me out because I'm a fugitive. I'm running from the law. I'm running from the authorities, and so all the all the uh, travelers on the space anomaly would rat me out too. They would tell me they would tell on me, and so I can't go to the space anomaly to get the root the blueprint to make my trade rocket. You are seriously not going to give me any traders, huh? Oh, thank God. I don't need this. Get out of here. Get out of here. No, 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 no. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I, you can't follow storyline missions. So I'm just going to... Uh, okay, yeah, good. Okay, we're not selecting that. We're ignoring that. But I was hoping he was a traitor. <laughs> like literally an outlaw that I could trade with, not some random pirate. Uh, Scuba Steve says, Jason, do you really think it's wise to make a public stream of your illegal activities? <laughs> you guys won't tell on me, will you? You guys won't tell on me. You're all cool, right? Everyone in the chat is cool. They won't, they won't rat me out. That is an outlaw mission, though. I mean, that is true, Fett. That is true. So maybe we'll allow that one. But part of that, Fett, is going to a different system, and I need to build my ship before I can even do that anyway. So, if I wanted to do the pirate system, it should mark one for me. Where's my pirate system at? Oh, I probably need to highlight it. So if I highlight it... It will mark the location for me. However, I still need to leave. I still need to go up here. And it's way out of here. Oh my god, it's way over there. So that's my pirate system right there. But, I need to build my ship custom made. That way they can't track me to the pirate system. And it's way far away anyway, so not worried about it. Not yet. So let's go back to that. I want a traitor. Come on. Give me a traitor. Dang it. Let's do this. One minute. Come on. Give me a traitor. Uh, Spicy Cat says, hey there. I'm just a new player, No Man's Sky, and you helped me so much with your channel and your work. Keep it up. Thank you very much. Awesome, awesome. I have a question, though. Are you able to take over and occupy a system with your freighter? No, you cannot do that as of right now. That might come in the future, in a future update, but as of right now, no. Your freighter is more of a, like, a, a movable uh, base, if you will. You can get a freighter and you can upgrade it and it can travel, but also you can build a base on it to have all your cool stuff there if you want to, but you can't really take over a system or anything like that. Again, maybe in the future, maybe there'll be a future update in like 2024 or 2025 or whatever, later in the year. But as of right now, you can't. I don't got room! I don't got room for any of the stuff you have! Um, yeah, I don't got any, I literally don't have any room. I know I have valuable cargo. I'm trying to sell this stuff. Come on. I'm going to destroy them. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to pick up the items they drop because I don't have any room in my inventory. I wish you could destroy them and get parts from their ship. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? If you destroy a pilot a pirate ship, you could just get the wings or whatever from it. Like, you pick up a random piece. I would love that. Because then I would be hunting pirates like crazy. I would get this. Look at this guy. I would take his fighter right now. I would take his engine or whatever. That should be... Maybe it'll be a future update. 
But right now, you don't get parts whenever you kill a pirate. You don't get their parts of their ship. Look at that. I can't even pick up. Look at there's a There's a thing here, but I can't pick it up. Right there. Boom. All right. Uh, but yeah, so I have two tr pirate transponders. I could sell that for 170,000. Heart farming in combat? Heck yeah. I wish, Alex. That would be awesome if you destroy it, but you don't get to choose. And so maybe they make it to where you get the wings mostly, but sometimes you get an engine or sometimes you get a, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, whatever the cockpit, but most of the time you just get the wings or something like that. Make it to where it's not like a fun way to get it. So like you, you mostly are going to get wings. So if you have a lot of wings, it's not really useful. But, you know, give us odds, like different chances, different uh, times we can use it. Hey, free part is a free part. That is true. And right now I'm not picky. I don't have any parts right now and I'm a fugitive. So I would take any parts right now. <laughs> that is true. That is true. And that would be awesome. I would love that because... You're exploding the ship, maybe one of, you know, and maybe it's not always. Maybe you have like a 50-50 chance of getting a pirate transponder or you get like wings or an engine or whatever. You get a part of the ship. So it's not even a guarantee. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But as far as I'm aware, the only way you can get a ship part is by scrapping it. Either finding a crash ship or buying one and breaking it apart all right we're gonna have to do this on foot because no trader wants to trade with me and i keep getting uh, attacked by pirates so let's just go we're gonna head you know what no, no no we're not heading north we're heading south we're gonna head towards this big planet right here that's what we're gonna do big planet on the horizon that was hurtful oh no yeah, hopefully we get a pirate to land for us. An outlaw to land. And if need be, I can call in my ship at any time and just fly away if I wanted to. But most of this is just trying to, you know, get going here. Dun, dun, dun. I should have done this on the radiation moon because I have radiation protection. <laughs> but I feel like the cold moon is lucky. It's lucky. This is a lucky moon, right? Uh, Jason's getting his workout on. Yeah, dude, gotta get those steps in, man. Gotta get those steps. Uh, Hunter says, Jason, I'm gonna do a fugitive run. I'm starting out. Yes, do it, man. Do it. It is super fun. And so maybe one day they'll allow us to turn on, like, more features. Because right now, there are difficulty settings you can adjust, but nothing that, like... You, you can do for like not talking to aliens or whatever so I and maybe that's too much to ask that might be too deep but I like the, having these custom modes where you don't get a starter ship or you can't talk to aliens or things like that I like having those those are pretty fun that is a market yep that's a market so we can't go there there is an unknown building over here So, yeah, I got a whole bunch of crap in here. Suspicious packet of tech? Oh my god! Okay, what do we do here? What do we do here? What do we do here? Oh, we get rid of our refiner. Let's see what we got. That does not look like technology to me. Did I just destroy my refiner for no reason to get some nanites? Yeah, I got 113 nanites out of that. That's just useless. What is this building? Please be a crash ship. A crash ship with not a pilot. No pilot with you, please. And you are... Dang it. You are just a save beacon. Well, we don't need that. Uh, maybe Expedition 13, you make a starship and choose to keep it or not. That would be awesome, Daniel. That would be awesome. And then Delta 1. Hello, Delta. Hopefully you're having a good Friday. I'm having a great Friday as well. Uh, I had some barbecue earlier today, and I'm making myself hungry thinking about it. 
doing our fugitive run. I'm, I'm, my inventory, look at this, Delta, my inventory is full of crap. I don't need to sell. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, no trader wants to land for me. I was flying through space and I was only getting attacked by pirates. So, uh, nobody wants to trade with me all of a sudden. <laughs> That's not fun. So I'm hoping if I run around on the ground a little while, maybe someone will land for me. But I don't know. Or maybe we run into a grave. That'd be good. I'll take a grave, too, because I need five. Well, I think I need three more uh, glyphs. We need three more. Get up here. Uh, hey, does one? It was going great, but now I want a barbecue, dude. I don't know if you have a good barbecue place near you. We have one called Bird Dog. Bird Dog Barbecue in my uh, in my area, and they make some really good. They have, I think it's Oklahoma barbecue, which basically means they put a lot of sauce on it. It's so good though. It is so good. Uh, but yeah, we did that. Uh, my wife and I did that for, uh, lunch today. And so now I'm all hopped up on barbecue. Uh, Jason, great content. Love your streams. Emmett, thank you so very much, man. Love seeing you in the chat. Uh, Aria says, where is your trade rocket? I wish I could have one. So part of being a fugitive means I cannot go to the, uh, the space anomaly. And that's where you would get the trade rocket. That's where you buy the blueprint for it, anyway. And so I can't go to the- I can't go to the Space Anomaly because I'm a fugitive. They would turn me in. And so I have to find it on my own, and that you can do, but it's really, really hard to do. Or just don't have it. <laughs> so I'm probably just not gonna have it. So because you can theoretically find it on your own if you uh, open up a whole bunch of distress beacons next to crash ships, they will give you a blueprint. You could talk to aliens, and sometimes they give you a reward as a blueprint, but we can't talk to aliens as a fugitive, so that's out of the- that's out of the, uh, the odds there. So, basically, the only way for me to get a blueprint is by opening up the distress beacons near crashed ships. Anybody, please land for me. We're going to need some more batteries pretty soon here. I probably should have done this on the, um, the radiation planet since I have a radiation protection. I have oxygen, right? Oh, yeah, I have room, though. I have room. Let me grab some more. I got the room! There we go. Um, Jason, I started on the worst planet ever for a fugitive run. Is that a, um, I would say toxic is probably the worst one. If it's toxic, then yeah. Toxic, not a, not a good one. Not a good one to start out on. At least with like a, a radiation planet, you get uranium. So that's good for fuel. But toxic, I'm not a big fan of those. I like cold planets only because I feel like I get lu more lucky on them than any other planet type. However, cold planets are very, very hard to find anything on because they're all white. So it's hard to distinguish things. Uh, radiation planets, very hard to distinguish, to find, uh, sodium on because everything's yellow and sodium plants are yellow. So there is that aspect. A cold planet is pretty good for, uh, finding plants. But it kind of blends everything together because it's all white. It is to toxic. Yep, Hunter. That is a bad one. That is a pretty bad one. Um, get that out of my inventory. So, yeah. I mean, I think the ideal planet would be a radiation one simply because you get free fuel. Launch fuel. Uranium is launch fuel. So, that is an awesome, awesome start. And cold planets just because I feel like I'm luckier. Um, I bet I beat Jason's time. Took me 13 hours to find a ship. Oh my god, and I had to buy one. Oh god, dude, that is rough, Obi-Wan. 
because I think it took me 10 hours and I think I had what four or five traders land and half of them they glitched out so I couldn't even buy the ship because the, the pilot didn't get out of it and the other half they were like haulers that I could never afford it was like 50 million or whatever so it was the worst absolute worst I think I ended up finding finally a crashed ship it was a crashed solar I believe and so I was really excited or crashed the hauler or something like that I was all excited about that. I was like, oh, thank God, after 10 hours. So I can't imagine after 13, man. Oh, because I was on the verge of just calling it quits and starting over again. But I was like, dude, we've done two streams and I can't find a freaking ship. Are you serious? That's an unknown building that they, they marked for you. So you'll see randomly they'll mark a building for you. That's probably a trading outpost because they want you to go find a ship. Uh, Whiskey says, Danny, the pirate Dare dreadnought is still free because you seize it. Yes, yes. So you can get it for free. You can get it for free. Because you're basically, you, you're, uh, you're holding them up, essentially. You basically, you're, you're threatening them. You're going to destroy them if they don't hand it over. So I believe it's free. Maybe it's just the first one. I haven't, sh I have not tested that out. But I believe it is free. Because you're seizing it. Dun 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 Uh remember to hit that like button get Oh yeah guys an hour and twenty one minutes in finally Guys yeah if you want to help out the channel definitely hit that like button it really does help out when you do that YouTube pays attention to that so if you have already I love you thank you so much for doing that and if you have not I would really super appreciate you doing that Pirate Freighters are all free yeah there you go Pirate Freighters are all free the dreadnoughts are all free Oh look at it, it actually marked a it marked a drop pod. Okay, that's that's beneficial. I can use this. I don't know if I can make one. Oh, yeah, I do. I can. Okay, good. Bo beautiful. Well, I mean, I have the room, too. I can't actually do it, though. <laughs> Let me pop this. I need the, uh, the carbon so I can make a nanotube. I need ferrite dust to make my uh, antimatter housing. Let's go. Uh, Dewey says, Jason, is it faster to ride an animal or sprint and jetpack boost? So it depends on what animal it is. Every animal has a different speed. And it depends on if you're going up or down mountains. If you have a very mountainous area, might be more beneficial to have a, uh, a pet do it for you. Because a pet doesn't care if it's going up or down mountains. Or, you know, or, or hills or whatever. Your jetpack does. If you're going up a hill... You might be able to go a little bit slower than if you're going downhill. If you can rocket jet and jetpack jump off the top of a mountain, you go a little bit faster. When you're going up a mountain, you go slower. So it just depends on what the terrain is like. Ultimately, probably more beneficial to have a, uh, a pet because they are more useful than not useful. In most instances, they are more useful. However... I don't like riding them because I don't. you don't have as much control over them. You can tell them to go and you kind of give them a direction to go, but they don't have to listen to you, so they're not as accurate. Like, if I get easily distracted, you know, like I want to go do that thing or this thing, I can move quickly on my feet, whereas a uh, pet, you got to kind of like gently steer them over there, and sometimes they will, sometimes they kind of slowly turn or whatever, so... For me, I like being on the on foot, simply because I can control it. Actually, let's get in here. Thank you. No, not that. Boom, boom, boom. There we are. So we got another spot. So we're almost squared off. We have this one weird one hanging off. Jason, I don't have the recipe for the hermetic seal. You have to turn off the tutorial hunter. You have to turn it off. That's why in the description below, you see it says turn off tutorial because you they give you the blueprint for the hermetic seal and your terrain manipulator. You need both those things. So turn off that tutorial. 
Uh, are you playing on console or on PC? I am playing on PC. And if you want to know uh, any details about my my settings, these are my graphic settings. So I have everything set to ultra except reflections because they seem to be broken on PC still. So reflections are kind of weird right now for PC. If you turn it to anything above enhanced, it'll break the uh, reflections. So that's why I have mine set to enhanced. There should be a patch probably pretty soon to fix that, but I don't know when. But yeah, older, other than that, I'd play on that. I have a an AMD 7900 XTX if you want to reference that. Um, all my PC specs are down below in the description. I have a not a modern, modern PC, but I do have a beefier PC. I have a, a 10900K. I have a, a good graphics card. I have a lot of RAM, a lot of memory, all that kind of stuff. Uh, an SSD for a hard drive. But yeah, these are all my settings. If you want to know. If you even care. I play at 1440p. Uh, I did turn it off, though. Oh, it should be in there, Hunter. You should have the recipe, so you're sure you... Now, make sure... The other thing is, make sure you're not selecting one of these. Because these are all categories of items. Make sure you go to everything. That's the big circle. That's everything. And then, it should be right there. It should be there. As long as you turn off your tutorial, it should be in your list. Now, make sure that you're, you're, you have your list to everything. Because, like, if I go to... If I go to, like, here, I won't see it. There's no hermetic seal there because a consumable category. Or if I'm on the component category, you will see it there. So make sure you, you didn't accidentally select one of these uh, indicators here. Make sure you go to all products. Oh, yeah, we're going towards the... I almost went the wrong way. We're going towards the big planet there. Uh, perhaps try a restart, Hunter. You might need to do that. So maybe the game bugged out on you. It could be that as well. So definitely try that. If you, if nothing else works, you might need to restart. Especially right now, since you just started. To restart your game and do it again. And just make sure, double check and triple check that you turned off tutorial. So that's the only way to get the Hermetic Seal recipe in the beginning of the game. Other than doing the storyline mission and actually getting it. But if you disable the tutorial, it shouldn't make you do any of that stuff. Dun dun dun! Nope, nope, nope. Jason, I'm on Nintendo uh, Switch. It shouldn't matter. They all should run the same, uh, Hunter. So you should still, if you turn off the tutorial, it should still give you the Hermetic Seal, even on Nintendo Switch. So the only thing that the... Oh, God. Didn't have any rocket on that. The only thing that the uh, Nintendo Switch does not have is settlements. You have capes. You have all the same settings, all the same stuff as far as I'm aware. I think the only thing you don't have on Nintendo Switch is uh, settlements as far as content-wise. Land! I need to sell you stuff! Nobody wants to buy my stuff. I need this, so I don't care. Hmm. Should I buy the Switch version or PS5? Uh, Armin, I would say PS5 if you have the option. The PS5 is a, uh, a more complete version of the game. So the Nintendo Switch version is missing settlements. I don't think they'll ever get settlements. Those are just too much for the Nintendo Switch version. And it is very limited on power because the Nintendo Switch is a more portable option. They, uh, I think it maxes out at 720p. And, I mean, it doesn't matter if you play on a little screen. 720p is, is for perfectly fine. But if you play with your Switch docked and you stretch out that screen on a big screen, it looks not so good. <laughs> if you play portable, it's, a, it's not a big deal. But it still limits you to uh, 30 frames per second. 
performance is not as good. The um, uh, loading screens take forever to load. So you're you're getting a um, you're getting a version of No Man's Sky that is good but not great, not awesome. The if you have the choice, I would say go with a PS5 or an Xbox version, or PC or whatever you have. The Switch version works and it's it's playable. Don't get me wrong, it's playable. Land! Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, I gotta call in my ship that way I can trade with him. There you are. Hey, man, I've been, I've been waiting for you for like the last hour and a half, dude. I'm also going to buy your ship as well, buddy. So hopefully you got a ride home. I hope you have a ride home, man. If not, I can, I know somebody, they, I can call somebody, but you know, they charge a really high price. So you might want to actually provide your own way home. All right. Now they won't let you. Oh yeah. I was going to do this last stream. Let me, let me show you. They will not let you, even though my ship is right there, they will not let you trade from the ship. So you'll notice if it says X, I, even if I hit it, it will not, it will not let you switch to ship inventory, no matter what you do. Even though my ship is right there, I can go and access it right now, but it will not let you trade it. Like I'm hitting X, nothing. I'm hitting the, I'm actually hitting the button here. Nothing. So they won't let you switch inventories. I have to literally run over here, or I have to actually just do this. Go my go in here. Let's trade quickly, quickly, quickly before he flies away. Because I need to buy his ship as well. Hey, buddy, I want to buy your ship. I'm going to sell you some stuff, and I'm also going to buy your stuff. So now, I should have all this stuff in my inventory. There we are. I think that's it. Again, yeah, I can do it. Just, it won't do it. I have over a thousand hours playing. Should I start a new game? Yes, always yes. I start a new game all the time. I love, absolutely love the beginning of No Man's Sky. Some games you don't want to start over. Like, um, I would say Valheim to a certain extent because you build your character up. You have all this equipment and stuff like that. And when you start over, it's like starting from zero. You're like, oh my god. Whereas in No Man's Sky... You're, you you kind of get that feeling, but it's not as bad. You're like, okay, I just don't have as good of a jetpack, or I need to buy my my ship. But it gives you something to work towards. Valheim to a certain extent, but it's less so. Like once you've gotten to the end game in Valheim, you're like, dude, my character is beefed up, ready to go for anything. I have all the cool gear. I spent hours collecting food and building a base. I don't want to start over. <laughs> uh. Anyway, okay, so we've sold everything to him. Let's buy his ship now. Because he has a fighter! He has a fighter! So, and I'm gonna take the engine off of this thing. You know what? Actually, no... Yeah, I'll probably take the engine off this thing. Maybe the nose. Either way, we need to buy it. Eight million! And thankfully, I have 14. So I can buy his ship, thank God. So I'm, I'm, de I'm definitely buying this thing. Thank you. So now, do I have any upgrades in here that I need? Oh, yeah. I have to get in here first. That way I can actually see it. I don't have any upgrades. And I have 1% engine uh, fuel, so we probably do need to uh, skedaddle out of here. So we're going to do this. This is a junker. So... Yeah, I'm going to take the engine off the, the other one, the one we just bought. I'm going to take the engine off that one. I'm going to probably take the uh, nose off of this one. So I like that nose. I like this nose better than the other one. I would take the wings, however, if you take the wings off of this one, remember, it comes with a dorsal fin. <laughs> I do not want dorsal fin. That is disgusting. Heather Silvermist is wrong. Dorsal fin is terrible. <laughs> yep, more inventory is exactly what it is, Dewey. Got to make sure we have our inventory. So I just wanted to make sure I didn't have any... Uh... Oh, no, no, we do have an upgrade here. I do have that, so I'll take that with me. Um, but yeah, we don't have anything else here, so yeah. Oh no, we have a ooh, we have we have a uh we have an engine or we have a hyperdrive upgrade, but I'm not gonna need that for now, so Yeah, that's it. That's all my upgrades. Everything else is all broken pieces, so never mind. There we go. So yeah, I'll take the nose off of this one. That's a pretty cool nose. And I'll take the engine, I think, off my where'd my other ship go? Where'd the other ship go? There it is. 
And I'll probably take the engine off this one because it's a mono engine. You know I like the mono engine. Yeah, look at that. One big old fat engine right there. I'll take the engine off of this. So we have a we have a uh, nose and we have an engine. We just need wings now. So let's uh, move all this stuff over. Beautiful. Now we don't we can't use we cannot use the uh, hyperdrive out of this. We cannot use it. We have to build our own before we can get the heck out of here. But I can move all this stuff over. So now we have room in our inventory. Beautiful. We have to build our own ship before we can leave. Like, I literally have the fuel. I have everything ready to go. I just, I cannot use that because this ship is registered. So, they would be able to track me because this is a pre-built. This is an authenticated starship. I need to make an unregistered one. I need to make a custom one. That way they cannot track me. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So we're good. So I think all we need is one more fighter. So instead of searching this, what we're going to do is... We're going to go to the radiation moon because I have a radiation protection. I don't know why I didn't do that before because I'm dumb. But hey, we got a ship. So if we have another uh, fighter land, we need... We're probably going to need a lot of money. I just spent, what, $8 million on that one? That's going to be rough. Where's the other moon? Is it on the other side of this planet? Of course it is. It's over there. Oh, uh, what is he doing right now? Armin, I am trying to find ships that way I can scrap them and turn them into a custom ship. So, the what we're doing is we're playing a fugitive run where I'm an outlaw. I'm running from the authorities. And in order to escape the authorities, I cannot talk to any regular aliens because they will t alert the authorities. I can only talk to other fugitives, like the guy I just talked to, the the, uh, the fugitive traitor, the outlaw traitor. I can talk to other outlaws. They won't rat me out. However, in order to leave the system, I need to leave it in an unregistered starship, meaning a non-authenticated. I have to build my own in order to not be tracked. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get enough ships together because when you scrap a ship, you only get one part. And we need three total to make a ship. We need wings, we need an engine, and we need a cockpit. So I need three ships to scrap in order to get all three pieces. So that's what we're doing right now. We're just trying to find enough ships that way I can scrap them all and build my own. Uh, should I run on foot? I probably should run on foot, just in case I run into somebody. So that's what we're going to do. I, I had way more luck with someone landing for me, so let's do that. I'm going to make sure this has enough fuel in it so I can call it in. No, not that one. Launch fuel is filled up, 100%. Alright, so now I can call in my ship if I need to. So, And the other way to test it is... Just, you know, if you can, if you can highlight it, like if you get a, if you get a green thing, you can summon it. That means you can call it in wherever you want. So I know I can do that. So let's run around on foot. We can, now that we have a clean inventory, look at all that inventory space. We can actually start uh, collecting more items. I can get some more buried technology so I can sell it and make a ton of money. So let's go. And anytime I need to, I can call my ship in. So it's not a big deal. Let's see what this building is over here. Drop pot, are you serious? My luck is really good today. Knock on wood. Really good luck today. I'm liking it. Another drop pot right over here. I can get some more inventory room. So I need to make sure I can make a... Up, oh, I probably need ferrite dust. Yep, I always need ferrite dust. I'm probably going to need to make a battery as well because uh, my radiation protection is not so good. And I don't have very many batteries. What is... Okay, that was weird. I was doing a little uh, dance there. Nice. It's not just looks, Armin. It's for its capabilities. You can customize the capabilities. Yes, dude. 
you can make your own S-Class ship. You can make your own whatever ship. It is very, very awesome. I like the ship builder. But it is mostly because I can make a purple ship. <laughs> well, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Purple ships are better than any other ship. Just because they're purple. <laughs> Let's do this. Oh, I don't have sodium nitrate. Crap. I need to make some sodium nitrate. So I need some uh, ferrite dust because I need to make a metal plating. There we go. All right, metal plating. I got rid of my, uh, my, uh... Oh, worm! Okay, I was wondering, I was like, what the heck is that shake? There we go. Now, sodium. We'll just make it all into sodium nitrate. Uh, you would make more by just selling the, uh, three ships. That is true, but... I mean, if you're if you're trying to are uh, trying to say making money, yes, absolutely, hundred percent. However, you uh, if with the new orbital update, you can make your own ship, you can build your own ship, but they make you choose between selling a ship for parts and getting your parts for you. So I can scrap the ship and get the parts to sell to make money, or I can scrap the ship and get a wing or a cockpit or an engine out of it. You don't get both. So you're basically sacrificing a ship to make a brand new one from the pieces. So you lose that on that money if you try to uh, if you're trying to build your own. You lose that on all that money. They don't let you get pieces in addition to it. Uh, does the Nintendo Switch have the online on the game? No, it does not, Freddy. It does not. That's another that's another thing that the uh, the No Man's Sky version of the on the switch does not have there is no online multiplayer so you cannot play with friends however it does connect to the online services so you can visit uh bases like if i make a base on xbox and i upload it to the cloud you can go visit it on the nintendo switch but i cannot be there with you to show you so i can't join you in your game but you can come visit my base you can go to uh, multiplayer areas, you just cannot play in multiplayer. You cannot play with other people. Well, we're right next to a cave. Let's get some batteries. Let's get some, uh, cobalt. So, yeah. There's no, like, actual, like, player multiplayer. You still connect to the online services. You still can upload your discoveries. You can still build a base and upload it to the servers and have everyone else check it and find it. But you cannot play with other players on the on the Nintendo Switch. So I thought for sure, I was like, okay, I'll be mobile. I can take my uh, Nintendo Switch version of No Man's Sky and play with people. Nope, no multiplayer, no settlements, and there's no save, uh, save moving. You cannot, there's no cross save. So I cannot take my PC save and move it over to the Switch. They don't do that. They don't allow that. So you're starting fresh, all completely over again. You cannot take a save from another platform and move it to the Switch. Not possible. So it kind of, those two things, no multiplayer and no saves, uh, cross saves, that kind of kills the Switch version for me personally, because I wanna, if I go on a long trip, I wanna just move my PC save over to the Switch and play it there. Can't do that. Oh, okay, I'll just play multiplayer. Can't do that. So it's like, oh, why would I play that version then? Uh, King Leonidas is Jason. After pulsing for how long and not getting a whole a whale song, should you load a restore point? I have the Dream Aerial freshly made and been pulsing for now an hour. Uh, an hour straight? I would say if you're pulsing for that long, go to a different system. Try a different system. That's what I would try. If you're in the same system and it's just not working in that system, it could be a weird bug in the system that's not allowing that to happen. You should be able to get one. So if it's not working, go and to go to another system. Go to a different system and see if it works there. It could just be that weird. It's a weird bug for that system. That uh, that uh, you know that planetary area. 
Uh, Jason, where I live, it's lunch, so I'm gonna eat barbecue. Yeah, do it, Hunter, do it. Get some barbecue going. Speaking of that, I gotta get some water in me. I'm, I'm parched. I've been talking for an hour and 45 minutes without stopping, because I love to talk. Oh, yeah, that felt good. All right. Oh, we have a geodesk site. That's good. There we go. There we go. So we got some... Oh, we're going to need some more ferrite dust in order to make more batteries. So we can do that out in the uh, wilderness. So that's not a big deal. I want to get as much cobalt as I possibly can. That way I can make a ton of batteries. Unidentified mineral is giving me gold. Dang it. I did one of your Iron Man challenges on the Switch. It was perfect for that. Being all alone on one planet. That dude. It, I'm not saying the Switch version is bad or anything. It's it's a good version. It's just not as good, I think, in my own opinion. As the other versions. So, if you have the option, sure. If you if the only thing you have is a Switch, it is a, it's a good version of No Man's Sky. It's a playable version. But if you have any other options, even a PS4 or an Xbox One, they are actually a more full version of the Switch. They're they're a bit rougher than the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, but if you have an older console, it's going to be better than the Switch version. You know, performance-wise, content-wise, is still they have uh, you know settlements, they have multiplayer. Uh, so if you have the option, definitely. But if the only thing you have is a Switch, totally fine. And it's fun to do. I, I played... I think I have 10 or 15 hours on the Switch. So not a, you know, not a lot compared to my other stuff. Like, I have almost 2,000 hours on uh, the PC and, like, 600 on the Xbox. But I put a decent amount of time in there, and it's a fun version. I just prefer the other ones. All right, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. We're getting a little crazy here. All right. Where's my ship? All right, we're going south. We're only going south because my ship is behind me, and I always want to go ahead of it. So let's go south. Da -da -da. Uh, I've only played on the PS4, and it is great. Yeah, I mean... PS4, all the versions of No Man's Sky are very solid. There are some that are better than others, don't get me wrong. You know, the loading times on the PS4 and the uh, Xbox One are a bit longer than the other uh, versions. The um, the frame rate is not as great as, like, a PS5 version, but it works. It's fun. So there's nothing wrong with them. It's just if you want the biggest, best version of No Man's Sky, you're going to be playing on PC or on PlayStation 5 and Xbox uh, Series X. And I would say the Xbox uh, Series X version and the PS5 ver version are basically the PC version at this point. Because the game is over seven years old, you know, it's, uh, it's, the limitations are there. It doesn't, it, I'm running on, on my PC and it does not take any power to run it. So it's not like, oh, if you have a PC, it'll run even better. There are limitations, you know, so the, the game itself is running as good as it possibly can on a, a PS5 and an Xbox Series X. You can't squeeze any more power out of it. Maybe if they update the engine and they uh, do the draw distance, that seems like that's an engine limitation, not a power limitation. So there's draw distance problems, there's texture problems, but that doesn't matter if you have the most beefy PC or a PlayStation or an Xbox or a Switch. Though that problem persists on all the versions. So uh, that is a game engine level problem. Not a power problem. Not because, oh, your PC is not good enough or whatever. Let's get some stuff here. And hopefully we can get some, another trader to land with a uh, fighter, please. I will take a fighter. That would help me out a ton. Want to land with me for me for a fighter? Land, fighter. I'll take your wings. No? Well, dang it.
Uh, Tyler says, I think a lot of these issues might be fixed with Light No Fire. I, that's my thoughts too, uh, Tyler. I think that they built No Man's Sky technically 2015, 2016. That's when it was finalized, I'm sure. And then they had to play test it and make sure all the versions worked. But you're thinking that was almost a decade ago. And they've never done it before. This is the first, this, Hello Games made Joe Danger before this. They did not do the procedural generated whatever. So this is the first game they've made like this. And so they didn't know what they needed. They didn't know how to do it all. And they've had seven years of experience of knowing what works and what doesn't work. So I'm, my hope is that Light No Fire, their next game, it's very similar to how No Man's Sky looks and feels it looks like. So we've I've never played it, so I don't know for sure, but it feels like that is what it is. It is the next evolution of this procedural generation engine. And being the next like evolution of it, hopefully they know this doesn't work, remove that out of the game, or this does work, we should focus on this part. And so they can kind of get rid of the limitations. Like, I think that going from billion kajillion planets, like countless planets to one planet, that helps with loading because you don't have to load any other planets. So maybe they can increase the draw distance. Maybe they can increase the texture, like the, the way the textures interweave with each other because you're only loading one planet. You're not loading all of them. You're not generating multiple billions and jillions of planets. <laughs> you know, uh, there's all kinds of things. I'm sure, and I have a suspicion, it's not going to be on old generation hardware. It's not going to be on the Nintendo Switch, the PS4, the Xbox One. Maybe it is, I don't know, but I have a hunch it won't be. And they can leverage the power of these new generation consoles so they can actually say, okay, we have this extra power. Because right now, they need No Man's Sky to work on multiple different generations of hardware. And so I think that's a limiting factor as well. When you know, okay, it has to be able to run on a switch. Well, we're gonna, we can't really do anything about the draw distance because it'll kill a switch. Anyway, so I'm hoping, that's what I'm hoping, is that they have seven years of experience. They can chuck out everything that doesn't work in No Man's Sky. And they can keep all good stuff that actually works well. And then, you know, working with more power and only next generation. But I mean, who knows if that's true. That could be the case. I don't know. I would imagine at this point, they want to say, look, we only want to work on the next gen hardware or current gen, whatever you want to call it. The PS5 and the Xbox Series X version of hardware. And PC, of course. Uh, no Man's Sky only loads? What is it? Right around you? Yeah, Dave. Exactly. It only loads, like, within, I think, like, the game only knows what's around you up to 800 meters, but it only shows you what's within 200 or something like that. So if you pull out your scope and you look, you know that's 524 units away. So we call those meters, whatever you want to call it, feet. But I think it only generates what's within about 800 so you have a max of around 800. So let's see if we can find something 800 away. That's 517. Is there anything 800 away? 312, 206, 4, 200, it's full 100. Uh, 397. So yeah, we're not seeing anything beyond like 500 at this point. But I think the limit is 800. Oh, we know that drop pod because we've already been there. So the game knows it's there thousand we walked past that one so it knows we were there so it, it knows we were there that's why it can mark those locations because we were already there but if we go to anywhere we haven't been like this direction it won't show us anything beyond 800 anyway so it, it's generating and showing that but ultimately the game knows this planet is a radiation planet it knows there is a trading outpost a thousand two thousand ten thousand feet away but it hasn't it's not populating that it's not drawing that in it's not showing that it's only showing you what's immediately around you did we already visit this building yeah we did dang it anyway that all that being said all speculation i have no idea maybe they are it's gonna be light no fire on the switch i have no idea i don't i'm not gonna bet on that though i don't think so but it could be 
Maybe they have a Switch version coming out. They have an they have an Xbox 360 version coming out. I don't know. I don't think so, but they, it's possible, sure. <laughs> I would bet on it. From the trailer, from the footage we've seen, it looks smoother, and it looks like the draw distance is there, but it's farther out. So to me, that says next generation. They are using more memory, and they're using more power, processing power, to get all that, which means next generation. Do I not have batteries? Oh, crap. I didn't make any batteries. You dummy. I didn't get any... F oh, man. Let's see if I can get any drop pod data. But we can't use the navigational data because we need to go to the space station and talk to the cartographer for that. And uh, he would rat us out. So we can't trust him. We don't trust him. But we can get the drop, uh, drop pod chart because that'll just mark the location of a drop pod. And we got two out of that. Nice. We got two of them. I need to get some, um, some ferrite dust so I can get some batteries going on here. Ferrite dust here. Oh, why are we going on foot now? Oh, ice! Because I, I want the traders to land for me so I can buy their ship. So I was flying around with no luck trying to find a crashed ship. And so what I, because you know, I have six million right now, plus I can sell some stuff out of here. So I have closer to 6.2 plus... So we have closer to 7 million right now with all the items I have. I can buy a ship at this point. So I'm trying to get a trader to land for me. That way I can buy their ship. Now, it depends on their ship. If they have a really big ship or if they have a hauler or something, I can't buy that. Uh, but I'm trying to bank on that. I'm trying to get them to land for me. And... The other benefit is I can pick up items to sell. I can make money this way. So I can get a whole bunch of these buried technologies. They will let me, uh, they will make me a whole bunch of money. So that's why we're doing that on foot. If I'm just flying around in circles, I can find a crash ship probably faster. However, I'm not making any money. And the crash ship I run into is not a guarantee to be a, uh, uh, like a fighter. It could be, but it's not a guarantee. We have to get a uh, more ferrite dust before I uh, die from radiation poisoning. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it makes sense to my brain. Maybe it doesn't make sense, like, overall, because, I mean, I am not a smart man. I, I never, I never uh, said I was. But it makes sense to me <laughs> to do it this way. Let's get some more ferrite dust. That way I can make a whole bunch of batteries and get rid of all that uh, cobalt. Get out of here with that. Give me all of that. Uh, King says, Jason, I just reloaded my restore point. Yes, it was an hour straight because I'm going off the video you uh, made where you uh, portal to get the S-Class living frigate. Oh, yes, dude. Well, if you're trying to do that, you maybe reload. That might uh, help. So... It's never a guarantee. Sometimes you reload. Sometimes you have to completely quit and then come back in. So any of those options definitely would try. If you're trying to get the S-Class. For sure. Let me get that. Boom. Did I get any glass out of there? I got one with a good weapon upgrade. I'm not going to do that, though. Don't install it, because once you install it, they'll get more difficult. Where'd the healer come from? I thought I killed all the healers. I'm just trying to get health upgrades. One. Give me that one. Okay. We got salvage glass out of there. Good, beautiful, beautiful. Salvage glass out of that one. Good, good, good. 
so the salvaged glass, the purple glass chunk you get from these containers, can give you upgrades, but also give you just regular items as well. So, like that. I got these. I don't need any of those. I, maybe I can use that. But other than these things, they're not worth anything. So, all right, I'm out. I'm out. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm not dealing with the uh, the quad. The quad will destroy me at this point. So I'm not even gonna mess with that quad. No other buildings. Nothing. That guy's on his own. You're gonna land for you're a shuttle. Don't land for me. I don't need you. <coughs> yeah, that's right. Keep going. Keep going. I don't want a shuttle. I want a fighter. Uh, you got two of them. Thanks to Jason explaining how to get two out of the last expedition. Yes, Crystal. Yes. Uh, so if you, uh, short version is if you were to complete the last expedition with your, uh, your, your, uh, starborn runner ship and your staff in your hand, when you quit, you can basically buy a version of that and then claim the expedition version as well so you get double <laughs> if you wanted it so I, i'm pretty sure they're gonna fix that in a future update in a patch because they don't want you to get double that's that seems like maybe it's uh not what you want to do i almost forgot the uh, buried tech over here gotta get this buried tech so i can make some money there are no buried bones or anything on this planet, so we can't make the bone money. We can get some buried tech. Is that more? Oh, that's mutant plant. We don't need mutant plants. But I see two smoke rings, which means there's two damaged machineries over here. So that means double buried technology and double chance to get an upgrade, hopefully. A shield upgrade or something out of one of these uh, damaged machines. Or nanites. We're up to four, almost 5,000 nanites. I think that's a B, maybe an A level. I think the A level is like 7,000. So maybe not quite an A class ship, but we can get a, uh, we can get a B level at least so we can get a better uh, ship than what we have now. So the, uh, the reactor is what I'm talking about. The reactors cost a lot of nanites. I think the S class reactor costs like 11 or 10 thousand nanites so i need a lot more nanites uh however i think a b is only five and like an a uh class reactor is like seven i think seven or eight so you know they're new so i, I still don't have the uh i don't have the prices down perfect yet get some ferrite dust that so we can make some more batteries Oh, my staff! I'd lose two staffs if I start over on a PS5. Yeah, I know. That's why I, I, I really hope. I hope that one of the big features for Light No Fire, because I don't think they can do it with No Man's Sky, how it's built. Maybe they can in, a, in an update, but I think that the save system on each system is different. And so what they need to probably implement is a, a cloud system where you save to No Man's Sky servers... And that way you can download that save to any platform you want. I don't know if they have that ability to do that, but I would love, absolutely love the ability to play my PC you know, save on my PlayStation 5 or switch from my Xbox Series X version to my, my PC or whatever. Be able to switch between different platforms and bring my save to each platform. I would love, love, love that. And hopefully there is a way for them to do that. The land for me? No. I want your solar. I mean, I don't need it because I and there's no way in heck I can use it, but I would love it. Then the only way my brain says that they can do it is like if they let you upload to the cloud on No Man's Sky, like a server, like the discovery servers. You upload your save to them and then you can download it anywhere you can log in. Like have it to where you log into the No Man's Sky server and say, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm Jason Plays, and my password is 1234. And then you can download any save you have. That would be cool.
Uh, oh, there's Barry Tech right underneath here. Dun 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 dun. No 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 no. Uh, what kind of planet are you on right now, Supa? I'm on a radiation planet, so a uh, irradiated planet. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I have radiation protection that I'm not using because I'm stupid. But I have that here, so that's why I, I'm using it. Do I? Can I use my starship? Wait a minute, what? What? That seems like a bug. My starship is too far away. Why is it letting me use uranium? Because I don't have uranium in my inventory at all. There's no uranium in here. Can I use it? That's a bug. Okay, I just realized that. That's a bug. Because I can't take it. Like, I literally, I can't pick it up. But it lets you use it from your ship. That's interesting. Wait a minute. Does it actually use it? It does. Now I'm down to 100. Wow. Okay, so it's technically using it for real. Okay. So that's a weird bug. That shouldn't be allowed. Like, if you're too far away from your ship, it shouldn't let you pull those. Good to know. Hey, Az, dude. Good seeing you in the chat. Azrath Gaming, if you guys are not following Azrath, he plays No Man's Sky as well as Star Citizen and some other awesome games as well. Uh, but he plays No Man's Sky 2. He's been playing... Have you been playing Starfield? Is that what I saw you playing last? I think. So, heck Yes. That's a bug. They shouldn't let you use your uh, your materials. That's pretty awesome. Well, that's a cheat. Start over. No, no. That was a test. It was a test. Because <laughs> technically, I have batteries. <laughs> I didn't think it would work, people bum. It's not supposed to work. Because I'm too far away from my ship. I'm literally, what? How far away from my ship am I? I'm 17 minutes away. There's no way I'm close enough. Even with the, uh, even with the teleport receiver, I think I'm too far away. So there's no way. Yeah, definitely too far away with the teleport receiver. Uh, No Man's Sky, Starfield, and Planet... Oh, yes, Planet Crafter. as ah, dude, Planet Crafter is so good. We were playing it on Wednesday with, uh, Beeble Bomb and, uh, Heather Silvermist. Planet Crafter is so good. Absolutely loving the, uh, full release. The 1.0 release of Planet Crafter. Uh, bug abuser detected. No, I was just checking. I was just checking. I didn't believe it at first. That's why I had to do it twice. What is this? Oh, building. Let's get around here. You land for me? No, not you. I don't want an explorer, so you can keep going. Whippy plant. Let's see. What is it? Do you think it's a, uh, do you think it's a crashed ship? Do you think it's a crashed fighter? Dun dun dun! Uh, slowly building up my PS5 save dice crystal. Heck yeah! I need to go back to PS5. I was doing a whole, oh, it's a, uh... It is a resource depot. We can do this, though. If we're far enough away, they won't know where it's coming from. I don't think we're far enough away, but let's try. Oh no, we're not we're not far enough away. They can see me. Let me see what the other containers are. Sulfurian, we don't need that. Silver, we don't need that. Dirty bronze, we do need that. That's good money right there. Yeah, they did find me now. They found me. All right, well, it's time to go. So I didn't go up to the sulfurine because it gives you a lot. It takes up a lot of your inventory and it doesn't sell for very much. So that's why I ignored it. Like, nope, don't need the sulfurine at all. Uh, Beeble Bomb feels like you were uh, carrying a heater around. <laughs> Just a little bit, a few times on uh, Wednesday. But yeah, I need to get back in there. I was doing a trophy run on the uh, on the PlayStation version because I've gotten all the achievements on PC and Xbox. So the only other platform I have left to get all the achievements on, for No Man's Sky at least, is PlayStation or the trophies. Nobody wants to land? Okay. I am in combat. I don't think they land when you're in combat.
Uh, but yeah, so I was do I was doing a trophy run. I probably should go back. I was trying to... I started a brand new save on permadeath because permadeath is the one that's really, really hard to get. A lot of people don't complete permadeath. And in order to get all of the trophies, in order to get the platinum, you need to beat the game on permadeath. So I was trying to do that one first. Uh, it's the first ever stream I've watched. I hope you understand mods. I don't know about that. Oh, no, you're talking to the mods. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, we we generally don't... We're not... Like, if you if you break a rule, we'll warn you. And if you get belligerent about it, that's when we usually put you in a timeout or we kick you or whatever. But as long as, you know, you're understanding and you're not abusing the rules. Like, everyone breaks the rules every once in a, every once in a while. You forget. Like, uh, like Old Explorer, he loves to use all caps. And it's... Uh, uh, Streamlabs will put him in a timeout for, like, 30 seconds or something like that. And it's just a gentle reminder. Don't do it, because, uh... You know, or don't spam, because that's what bots do, and we try to catch the bots that way. Nothing, nothing. Sorry, spit on my microphone. Absolutely! Bugs are a disadvantage. If it gives you an advantage, it's a feature. Well, <laughs> I mean, maybe. You could look at it that way, but we try not to cheat in any way like that. So, in general, when you find a bug, like, I didn't know! I, I seriously, honestly, did not know that you could... Like, look at it. It still lets me do it. That's crazy. I didn't think it was going to work. I was like, there's no way that's going to let me do it. I'm too far away. But now I know. They will absolutely let you do it. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, that is definitely a bug that needs to be uh, fixed. And there's, there's going to be stuff like that that you don't notice or they don't notice. And they'll patch it eventually. They're, they're really... They're very good about patching it. Now... When you get the patch, that's a different story. You know, depending on when Microsoft decides to give out the patch to all the uh, Xbox players. <laughs> that's a whole different story. But they're good about putting out patches to fix it. Hello Games is good about patching the game. They might not get all the bugs, but they try their best to get as many as they possibly can. Not seeing any... Uh my inventory is getting kind of full. Oh, yeah. I better call in my ship. Holy crap. Come on in, man. I need to... I need to make sure. Yeah, I got all this crap jammed up in my uh, inventory here. So let's drop it all off. Look at all that room. It's beautiful. Beautiful. We can go get some more uh, cargo room, some more uh, inventory space. I think this is all good. Yeah, we'll put that away. We'll put that away. That's going to be for my batteries. Get some more oxygen in here. And I think, yeah, we're all good. Oh, yeah, we need to refill my launch fuel. Now it's at zero. No traders landed. I just I heard someone fly over. There they are. They didn't land. Oh, there was one fighter. I could have used you. Uh, I missed the nanite bug where they gave me a few nanites in two minutes, dude. Yeah, <laughs> doing the whole negative nanites. That was beautiful. Uh, no stealing. I mean, as a fugitive, no. You can steal, but you just can't interact with uh, aliens. So. You can destroy a freighter. Like, if I see a freighter, I can shoot it. But part of the rules are if you if you go after a frigate and you destroy the freighter stuff, you have to leave the system because they call on the authorities. And so, basically, if you destroy a freighter, you got to go quick. You got to leave. Did I refill? I did. Okay, good. Well, let's keep going. I made room in my inventory. So we're good on this. I heard somebody. No? I'm just hearing things now. All right. I'm just hearing things now. My main save has over 400 million nanites. Dude, that's a lot. Holy crap, dude. That's insane. I think I never have more than like 200,000. At that point, I just stopped going after nanites. I stopped, I stopped farming them. So I'm like, dude, once you get beyond 100,000, you really don't need that much more. 
So four mi 400 million is pretty insane. It's pretty intense, man. Pretty intense. Oh yeah, we need more ferrite dust. I need to get rid of my, uh, my cobalt. Fighter, land for me. Land for me. Land for me. Land for me. Ah, I hate you. Dang it. Get some more. Oh, that's pure ferrite. Can't use that. Let's get some of these. That way I can get some uh, batteries. Thanks for telling me I did not know that. What does Saz say? Uh, Saz says uh, Jason is doing the fugitive run right now, so he can't play multiplayer. It would be against the fugitive run. Yes, yes. So the uh, multiplayer would give you an advantage. Someone might give you an item, and so that's an unfair advantage. So we don't do multiplayer on a fugitive run, on a fugitive challenge. So we try not to do any exploits or any cheats. So no obvious, like, don't duplicate glitch, don't do a save, you know, reload, things like that. Don't use your... Uh, don't refill your stuff from your ship, things like that. Now that we know that that's how it works. Um, no, obviously, uh, you know, cheat, glitch, bug in your advantage. Uh, and that includes multiplayer because people might join up and give you a, a cool item, like wings from my ship. That kind of defeats the purpose of a uh, fugitive run. There we go. Make some more of this. Beautiful. Now for the 32 uh, batteries. We should be good for now. So let's keep going. Trying to get a, an outlaw to land for me, specifically with a fighter. I don't see a fighter. I see a hauler. We don't want that. Because haulers will be too expensive to buy. Uh, Beeblebub says, uh, they will be dropping the updated public test branch first, I assume April, beginning of May, then about two weeks before the public release. Yeah, so if you're talking about the, the Valheim, the Ashlands update, I will, well, yeah, we were talking about that earlier. I'm excited for it, but yeah, we, uh, on Bela's Rest, we're, uh, as far as I know, and I think Beeblebub will, uh, agree to this, we are not doing the, uh, we're not doing the Ashlands update until it's for public, like when it fully releases, not the testing branch. So the way that they've done it previously, like for the Mistlands, was they put out the Mistlands update in the testing branch to make sure everything was working correctly, and if they found any bugs, we can fix it. And then they let it go for two weeks, and then they put it publicly for the final release after they found all the bugs. And so we assume that's what they're going to do with the Ashlands update. They're going to put it out for public testing at first for a couple weeks, and then find all the bugs, find any issues, fix them, and put out the full release later on. And we won't be doing the full, we will only be doing the full release on Bela's Rest. So there's going to be a couple weeks where the Ashlands update might be kind of out for testing, but we're not going to have it playable on Bela's Rest because we'll be waiting for the full release, the actual release of it. I'm getting a lot of flyovers, but no one's landing. I, you know, I've just noticed that. I, gotta, I keep hearing ships fly over me. Why don't you guys land? Killing me. So, yeah. So, there's going to be a couple of weeks where I'm going to be on, like, a social media blackout for Valheim. Because so I'm, I'm going to... For me, personally, I'm trying to avoid all the spoilers. Like, I kind of... I've seen little tidbits here and there, but I don't want to play it. I don't want to hear about the uh, Ashlands update until we do it on Bela's Rest, because I want to see it with Beeblebum and Gek and uh, Survival Bob and Zane. I want to go through it with all of them and, you know, experience it for the first time on stream. I don't want to, like, see or hear about it beforehand. So I'll probably be on Blackout. And so, like, whenever that update comes out, I might stop playing Valheim just because I don't want to accidentally get someone to come in and, uh, and like, if I stream it, somebody's going to come in and try to mention something. And so we might be avoiding Valheim for that couple of weeks while they do the testing on it. Because I love you guys, and not everyone does it, but there's always going to be that one person who jumps in the chat and says, Oh, have you seen this? And they don't mean anything mean by it, but they're, they're excited for Valheim and they see a stream and they'll jump in and say, Hey, have you seen this new thing in, in Ashlands? Like, oh, no, don't tell me. Don't tell me about it. 
I'm trying to avoid it. So yeah, it's just human nature. You get excited about something, you want to talk about the cool new stuff. I get it. I get it. Uh, yeah, to avoid uh, any corrupting of save files yeah, or characters and not downloading the server, just find it funny. We have to test branch for early access game. Yeah, I know. I know, Beeps. I know. It's the, the whole game is literally a test branch, technically. But I know. <laughs> That's why it's Beeble Bump. I've, my, my big argument with, the, uh, with Valheim is that it, it, I think it sets the expectation for early access too high. I honestly do, because if you play Valheim, it is a full, finished, perfectly good game. Like, it feels like a done game, and they're just adding more content. They're adding DLC to it and calling it a content update. So, it, it, you know, you go to play something else. There's other games that are early access, and they feel like early access. They're not finished. They have a lot of bugs. They have a lot of issues. Valheim, not so much. It feels like a polished It feels like No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky fully released in uh, 2016, and they just keep adding content every couple of months. <laughs> That's what it feels like. They're adding DLC. <laughs> so it, it kind of, like, it sets the expectation wrong, because a lot of people, they play Valheim, and they're like, oh, this is early access. I should go play, like, Enshrouded, or I should go play Nightingale. And you're just like, oh, those games are a little bit more rough, because they're actually early access. <laughs> they are legit early access. <laughs> Uh, why is since Jason has suffered with his base during a previous update? Oh, no, dude, uh, the newest patch actually fixed my update, or fixed my base. So my base was getting kind of rough with the frame rate in Valheim. Uh, lately, you know, over the past couple of weeks, it was getting kind of rough, like the frame rate was getting kind of low. Because I'm extending and building and there's a whole bunch of lights everywhere. And then this last patch that came out, the, the last the latest patch that came out, I think two days ago or three days ago, it fixed a lot of those problems. And I was like, okay, all right. That fixed a lot of the issues. So it's still not perfect, but the frame rate's a lot better, a lot smoother. So, and I don't know what it is, but it feels like they made the graphics sharper. Like, you know, Valheim is not like the best looking game ever. It has like that old like PlayStation look to it, but hey, OBS, you're killing me. OBS, give me a second here, guys. OBS is acting up. Let me see what's going on here, OBS. What are you doing to me? All right, all right. It's just acting a little funky. I say OBS, I mean my internet connection. <laughs> but yeah, so Valheim, it does have like a, a PS1 or a PS2 look to it. Uh, but the lighting is insane. So that's what usually gets you, is the lighting of it. Having lamps everywhere, having torches, having fire everywhere. It will kill your frame rate if you have a lot of shadows and lights. And so, I don't know what they did with the latest patch, but man, it like really, really uh, upgraded and fixed a lot of the uh, frame rate issues I was having. Uh, you're back already, by the way. Yep, OBS, stop killing Jason. I know, I, I have a, uh, I turned on a setting to hopefully make that more smooth. So I don't have to stop and restart my OBS every time. But it's more about my internet just sucking. Uh, by the way, sorry for, uh, sidetracking Jason from No Man's Sky. Oh, dude, everyone is- I have a feeling over the next couple of weeks it's gonna be a lot of Valheim stuff, because I'm- I'm seeing the Valheim, uh, uh, Twitter account. All of a sudden they're tweeting a lot of stuff about Ashlands, so I'm like, alright. They're getting ready to put it out there for public testing. So, we're gonna start hearing a lot of it. So, again, that's probably why I'm gonna be, like, uh, avoiding some, uh, Valheim topics later on. And probably not streaming Valheim. Once it goes into pu public test, I probably will avoid streaming ju Valheim specifically, just because I want to avoid that whole excitement over the new feature. So I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it for me or anyone else who's waiting for the the full release. So we'll pick something else. We'll do more Planet Crafter or something, or maybe we'll do uh, Stellar Blade is coming out. Maybe we'll do some Stellar Blade uh, uh, streams. Because man. 
I'm excited for Stellar Blade. Not for that reason either. I'm excited because it's actually a good game. I've been playing the demo, and the demo is freaking awesome. So, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for uh, Elden Ring as well. Elden Ring is coming around the corner. June is coming up real fast. Uh, Jason, when will your next stream be? It's always, uh, we try to stream at least on Monday and Fridays. Every Monday and every Friday we stream. And in general, I'll stream on Wednesdays, but not a guarantee. So that one is kind of the iffy one, but Monday and Friday for sure. And then I stream with uh, Heather Silvermist on Thursday. We do Valheim on Thursday. I want that fighter. The 17 million. I don't even have that much crap. So never mind. I don't want that fighter. I can't afford it. Up building. Let's see. You guys think I'm going to get a fighter? Okay. Uh, OBS software is used for live streaming or recording videos. Yeah, yeah. So I use OBS. That's when, whenever I say OBS, I'm talking about the program I use to stream. And it's technically not OBS's fault. It is my internet fault because my internet provider is a piece of <laughs> So I, in general, I'll say, oh, come on, OBS. It's more about, come on, internet, please hold steady. <laughs> my internet is junky. And it's the only provider, believe me, I just, the last weekend, a week ago, almost, I literally, uh, I, I was calling a whole bunch of providers. This is the, the one I have is the only one that provides fast enough internet for streaming. Like, there are other options. And that's how they kind of weasel out of, well, it's not a monopoly because you have dial-up, Jason. Why don't you just use dial-up? Well, I do, my job is in YouTube streaming and... To stream something, you need more than 1.5 megabyte uploads. <laughs> so that's generally why I'm like, ah, okay. I mean, yes. Is it a monopoly? Not technically, but it's as close to a monopoly as you could get without technically calling it a monopoly. Anyway, whenever I complain about OBS, it's mostly because my internet sucks. It's not OBS's fault. It's my internet. Oh, it's a monolith. I mean, ooh, look at building, building. What's going on here? All of a sudden, we got all the buildings. Uh, so yeah, until uh, new internet providers move into my area and lay down lines, I am stuck with what I have. And so I spent the weekend adjusting some settings, changing some settings. Hopefully that fixes, or at least alleviates, doesn't fix, but alleviates a lot of the issues, I'm hoping. And so hopefully the hiccups will be less frequent. Ultimately, is that a pillar? No, it's not. Okay, good. Oh, it's like, is that a pillar? Yes. That's not a pillar though. Hopefully I can, uh, you know, I mean, worst case scenario, I'm going to have to drop down to 1080p and really drop my bit rate. And that, I don't want to do that, but that is the ultimate solution, I guess, is to just stream at a very low bit rate. And I don't want to do that. But if my uh, internet can't handle the high bit rate, I'm going to have to drop it down, even though I pay for the high bit rate. And that's the thing that chaps me. And that's the thing that irritates me the most. Oh, it's a manufacturing facility. We don't need that. Is that I'm paying for a high, you know, high speed, and I can't use high speed. <laughs> and that's irritating. I found a big skull in space. Nice, Dan. You got a cool anomaly. I like that. And the... um. In the expedition, there was memories attached to those, uh, but I, in normal gameplay, there's no memories attached to it or anything like that. Um, Azrath says, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> you just gotta, you just gotta laugh. You gotta laugh it off, man. My internet sucks. One of these days. Or, you know, worst comes to, you know, worst comes to worst. I'll become a, a YouTube billionaire. I'll be PewDiePie uh, rich, and I'll be able to just afford to have them lay down the lines for me myself. Uh, the last time, I think I talked to him last year about it. I talked to a fiber optics company, and I said, look, you guys aren't in my area. They're not planning on being in my neighborhood until 2026-ish. So we're a couple years away at least, at minimum. So I said, how much would it cost for you to lay down the lines? Like, if I wanted to pay for you to do it, how much would it cost? And they literally, they got back to me. You know, they, they did say, oh, you know what? We'll look into it. If you want your line, we will look into how much it would cost to do that. $80,000. And I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> good to know. Not going to happen, but good to know. 
80 grand. Holy hell, man. I was like, are you kidding me? And they're like, well, we're laying a lot of fiber optics and that's really not cheap. And they have to go get permits. They have to go through easements. They have to get approval and all this stuff. And I was like, oh my God. Nope. I don't want, I'm not spending that much money. I'm not that rich. <laughs> You know, I don't have 80 grand to just blow. Holy macaroni, dude. Holy hell. Uh, all about that fiber. I know, Azrat, dude. 80 grand for it. And that's the figure they gave me. I don't know if that's true or not. I didn't investigate it. But they literally gave me, like, like look, dude. If you want it, that's awesome. Fiber optic lines are very expensive to lay to begin with. But it's not just that. It's getting approval from the city. It's getting going... It's not just going to be a straight shot from one end to the other. You have to go around neighborhoods. So you're talking, we're laying way, way more line than you think just to get to your house. And we have to get all the permits and all the, uh, all the approvals to get through there. So yeah, <laughs> good luck. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm going to have to wait. I'm going to have to be patient and wait for them to progressively uh, move the lines down to me. <laughs> So they'll eventually get here in a couple years. I just got to deal with crappy internet for a couple years. <laughs> That's all. I just got to deal with crappy internet for a couple years. 80K. Okay. Can you hold on? Let me go make a few calls. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Let me call my drug dealer, Tony Montana. He get, spot me alone. <laughs> Good Lord. 80K. Uh, eight, internet 80K fundraiser. No. See, that... I, I don't mind doing any of that kind of stuff, but when it comes to, like, internet, I'm like, okay, I, I might bitch and moan about my internet, but it does work 80, 85% of the time. So there are hiccups here and there, and they are irritating for sure. But when I'm uploading video, no problem. You know, when I'm doing all that kind of stuff, there's no issues on that most of the time. It's when I'm doing insane streaming. I'm streaming at 1440p with a high bit rate. You know, so, I mean, yeah. Should I be able to do that? Absolutely. I'm not going outside of my upload speed. The fact that I cannot even use the upload speed they give me irritates me with my current company. <laughs> the fact that they tell me, oh, yeah, you can totally use that much. And I'm like, are you sure? Because I'm only using half of it and it's still not working. <laughs> are you kidding me? <coughs> but, yeah, it is what it is. I'm not going to do a fundraiser. I mean, and to be fair... I didn't ask him how long it took. I just asked him what the price was. It could be I pay them 80 grand today and I still have to wait another six months, maybe a year for them to get approval and lay down the act. They literally have to lay down the line. So it's not going to be tomorrow. I get it. So it's not like I'm going to pay them today and tomorrow all of a sudden I get fiber installed. They still have to get the permits. They still have to lay the lines down. So yeah, it's still going to take a year, six months, whatever. So I'm just paying 80 grand to get it one year faster. That's not worth it. That's not, that's not smart. <laughs> that's not smart. Oh. Uh. Oh. Uh. Jason, I died in my permadeath run right after the end. Oh no, Hunter. Uh, Pascal, Starlink is not as fast as my current provider. And I have not verified this with them, but. Because I live in Colorado, we're in the mountains, so I have, on the west side of me, I have tons of mountains, so that hurts, uh, signal. If it's cloudy, rainy, you have to have, like, the perfect position, so I would still run into the same issues I have now, currently, where I just randomly lose connection because it's cloudy that day, or there's a, there's a snowstorm outside, or a hailstorm, or whatever. Environmental issues. And so you still run into that. It's a it's a really good option if you have no internet. But uh, from everyone I've talked to, Starlink is awesome because you didn't have anything. It's not ideal because it does have issues with um, direction or uh, the environment, things like that. Because you're relying on a literal satellite connection. You know, and we have mountains here. It's not... It's not like if I was in Kansas, maybe, because it's all flat, but I have mountains here, so <laughs> good luck with the mountains. I have huge mountains around me. If I was out in the plains, probably better idea. 
Call Elon Musk for a bank transfer. Tell him No Man's Sky stream depends on it. I, you know what? I, maybe I'll reach out just as a joke. Maybe he will. <laughs> but hey, Elon, can I get a can I get a loan? Just a small eighty thousand dollar loan. I need to stream. <laughs> it's for internet. He would say, no, no, go get Starlink. I'm sure he would. And I'm like, well, it's not as cool as I want it to be, so Elon. If you can guarantee me, uh, uh, you know, an upload speed that doesn't have any delay because it's satellite, there's also a delay. And, you know, it's all stable. You don't have to worry about clouds or bad weather <laughs> or mountains, you know, then yeah. I have huge mountains. That's what she said. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> uh, anyway, hopefully I, I'm setting some stuff. I'm changing some stuff around. It is a little bit of a hiccup here and there. It's less severe. Like last week, we had to. I had to totally stop the stream and restart it. And I mean, if it gets, if it keeps being bad, I'll just lower it down. Maybe I did put up a vote on the on the uh, on the channel. It was a secret vote. You guys did not know about it when you voted. If you voted in the poll for uh, YouTube, I was asking if it was more important to have a higher resolution or a higher frame rate. That might have something to do with streaming. <laughs> Because if I lower my resolution, I can probably lower my bitrate. Or if I lower my frame rate, I can probably lower my bitrate. So it might be um, testing to see what's an ideal situation. To see what would work better on a stream. So th that might be coming along. That might be, that might be the reason for that. I just realized I've been picking up a lot of oxygen <laughs> and not using it. There we go. Um, oh, we can probably make some life support shells. There we go. Oh, I need more uh, carbon. Don't need this so we can get rid of the extra silicate powder. Uh, I think he has the best ban hammer for sure. Do I? <laughs> I wonder why Jason never really got into Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen. It's because I'm not a smart man, and so I need to actually sit down and learn those games. I have Star Citizen, and I have Elite Dangerous. So I just need to sit down and actually play them. And so I get, I get confused easy unless the game is, like, simple to comprehend. Like, Star Citizen... That's like learning a new language. And there's no controller support, so that makes it even worse. <laughs> so, if it has controller support, then sure, it makes it a little easier to, to use a controller on it. No controller support, Star Citizen, that's like... That's gonna blow my mind. Uh, if you're a beginner, it is a better to start with easy or normal mode. Yes, for sure, for sure. I play on permadeath or extreme. You don't want to start with that. I mean, maybe some people, they love that difficulty setting. But if, you, if you've if you never played No Man's Sky before, I would suggest playing on normal mode to at least get your footing, to know what, you know, what works, what doesn't work, how the game generally operates, and then jump into permadeath. No worries. Yeah. If you like that difficulty. But it is... They don't pull any punches. If you play on permadeath, you play on extreme... You're taking a lot more damage, and if you die, it's over. Like, you they delete your save. It's permadeath for a reason. Oh, wait a minute. Building. Um, uh, boom, 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 boom. Oh, Jason should make a new save, and so, if so, easy and normal or permadeath. Oh, yeah. Well, I play on permadeath because I like the challenge. I played a lot of No Man's Sky. And it also, it, it kind of gets me used to playing the game again. So, like, if I bounce between, like... Uh, like Planet Crafter and Valheim and I come back to No Man's Sky it kind of uh, I forget things and how they work and everything and so when I play on hard mode it like burns it into my memory again because you don't mess up on hard mode or permadeath because that's the end of it so it forces you to be more careful at least for me that's a uh, manufacturing facility we don't need that Uh, Star Citizen controller support is actually pretty decent. Really? I haven't tried it in a while, uh, Beeble, so maybe I'll, I'll download it and try again, because I have not tried it. I know that games sometimes tell you that they have controller support, and then when you try it, you're like, 
I mean, yes, on a technicality, it supports a controller, but it is not good with a controller. Like Planet Crafter, I love Planet Crafter, but man, the controller support is not so good on Planet Crafter. It is definitely made with a mouse and keyboard in mind, and it's there. It technically has it, but it doesn't feel very good to play with a controller at all. So that's why I play it with a mouse and keyboard. Uh, but I need to check it out. If uh, Star Citizen has it, I need to jump in there and see if it actually works. Like, works well. Dun, 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 dun. Fighter, land for me. Oh, there's two of them. One of you guys land for me. Really? Oh, yes! Thank you! I don't want your wings, though. God dang it. Warrior agent. Let's see. Can I even buy your ship? It's, it's a heavy fight. It's a heavy fighter. So it's going to be more expensive than normal. Let's see. Sell all that. We'll keep the starship launch fuel because I probably can use that. Um, nothing else to sell. Okay. Now we're going to get out of here. Can I afford the ship? That's the question. Heavy fighters usually are more expensive because they have more inventory room. Twenty-two, and I only have eight. The other guy should have landed. Even if I exchange it, it's worth seventeen. I don't even—I can't even exchange it, but I don't—I wouldn't want to because I'm trying to get three fighters. <laughs> so if I trade it, it basically negates everything. Ah. Oh. So I need twenty-two million to buy this fighter. There's no way. There's no way. I can't get another. Uh, 14 million. <laughs> There's no way. I need to more than double my money. Uh, Alex says, Jason, isn't that the same as your other ship? Yes, but my other one is a crashed one. So my crashed ship, um, it probably would be less worth it because my crash ship is broken. So they, they basically, they lower the price if it's crashed. So there's no way. And even then, I don't want to trade it in because I'm trying to get another one, an additional one. So thank you, but no thank you. Dang it! I was hoping for a cheaper fighter. I was able to make some money, though. I am up to 8 million. So <laughs> I just need a really low-level fighter to land for me so I can get a freaking engine or some wings or something off of it. That's all right. We're going to keep going around. We'll, we'll make some money. We'll make some money, and maybe eventually we'll get to a point where we'll have enough to buy that $22 million fighter. <laughs> that was the one benefit of being on the coal planet. It had bones. It had ancient bones on it. You can make a ton of money with ancient bones. You know, the uh, buried technology, you only get a little bit for a stack. You get a half a million for a stack, which is good. It's decent. And it's everywhere, so you can get a ton of it. However... The bones, man. Holy cow. You can make a ton of money on the bones, depending on if you're lucky or not. Some bones are very cheap. Some bones are... You can get over a million. Almost two million on a bone. Uh, not the broken ships. They seem to have been smart enough to block that in space stations. Yeah. Uh, I wish I could change our exosuits. Automated voices. That might be a cool uh, addition. That would be awesome. I would love that in a new mod. But... They would have to re-record, like, get someone's voice, and so that probably would take a lot of work. So you'll notice a lot of the NPCs don't speak. They make grunt sounds, and that's it, and they've been doing... They basically recorded grunt sounds for, like, seven years ago, and they've never changed them. And so they have one voice. There, I believe there's one person, one lady that works at Hello Games that does the voice for your suit. Because we've had one change where one of the expeditions you started out on a freighter. And they changed the introduction to say, hello, uh, welcome home, Captain. And I was like, oh, they changed it. But they I'm sure it's because she works at the, uh, the studio. And so they just got her in the booth to record for like an hour or two and get it all done. But if you get different voices, that's going to that's gonna cost you probably. You need to pay voice actors, all that kind of stuff. Oh, it's a shop. You guys could have landed. Eight million. I could have, I could afford your ship. Eight million right there. Uh, 22 for that one. Never mind. I don't want that one. The other guy, 8 million. I could have done. I could have bought that. Let's get over there. 
Uh, grunt sounds. Uh, where do they you get those from? I mean, you know, I'm sure. I hope. Maybe, you know, maybe one day uh, Sean Murray will do a, an interview and someone will ask him, Hey, where did you get the sounds for all of the uh, aliens in No Man's Sky? And I want him to say, well, I got in the sound booth and I was just doing the Ugh! and we did a voice modulator on it and that's it. <laughs> so it's technically Sean Murray. He did all the voice sounds for all the aliens. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but that would be I hope that's true. I hope that is true. That would be amazing. Uh, Hunter says, Jason, can we do a multiplayer permadeath run sometime? Maybe, maybe when we're, we're not doing a fugitive run. Definitely, I, I like doing multiplayer. Now, remember, Hunter, that multiplayer in No Man's Sky is very finicky. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not work at all. So that is the other thing to keep in mind. Even, you know, uh, like, even with a really good connection, you might have problems. I don't have a really good connection because my internet sucks. But... Uh, just in general, No Man's Sky is very finicky, very, uh, bug-prone, crash-prone when you're playing multiplayer. But yeah, definitely, dude. We haven't done a multiplayer in a while. You know what? A uh, Hunter, you know what you should do? Every Friday, Ricey Starship Emporium and Flowery Squirrel, they hold a No Man's Sky community night. So they basically, they just play, they hang out. I mean, maybe we'll raid them today. They just hang out on a planet. They race. They do, they trade uh, ships, pets, all kinds of cool stuff. If you're looking to just hang out and chat in No Man's Sky, talk about No Man's Sky stuff, look at cool ships. Like they have rare ships that you cannot find anywhere else. They have ice, awesome items that you, if you want, they can trade you items. They can trade you pets if you're looking for a cool pet. All kinds of cool stuff. Every Friday, they do a community night. And it's really, really awesome. So that would be tonight. So definitely check out Ricey Starship Emporium and Flowery Squirrel. Uh, Jason, voice No Man's Sky. Dude, I would do it. I would 100% do it. And all I would ask for is... Let me play Light No Fire early. <laughs> Even then, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to negotiate on that. <laughs> I'm not... Uh, so I would be all for it. I would love to be in No Man's Sky. I would do the suit in No Man's Sky, whatever. I'll be a Gek. I don't want to be a Viking. Make me a Gek. I'll be a Gek, 100%. Uh, yeah, 100%, I would love that. That would be awesome. But I'm not a voice actor, so I have no illusions. They don't want my voice. <laughs> They'll be like, all right, Jason, uh, you're kind of, you're going to suck at doing this. <laughs> Lot. Well, you know what? I said, I was about to say land. He did land, just not the, the not the fighter I wanted. The, uh, the shuttle is here. So I can trade with him, at least sell my items. So we can do that. Um, there it is. I think that's it. We have everything out of my starship, right? Oh, no. Oh, God. Let's call on the starship. We talk to him again so he doesn't fly away. Got to keep him busy. I thought I sold everything in my starship. I guess not. Holy crap. Um, that's it for here. All right. Give me a second. Do not fly away. Do not fly away. I'm, I'm purposely stopping in the middle so I could talk to him, distract him, and prevent him from flying away. That way I could sell all of the stuff. I know I can refine it down and make more money, but I'm not... I'm basically... I just want to get it done quickly. That way I can make room in my inventory. There we go. And I don't need a ship because it's a uh, shuttle, so... On that. We, we can't build a shuttle, so... Done. But yeah, I, you can't refine a geodesite. That one you can't, but the uranium, the dirty bronze, I could have refined the dirty bronze into silver and sold it for more money. However, I don't have enough time to do all that stuff because this guy's going to fly away before that's done. So instead, I'll take the little bit of a hit on the price just to sell it. Let's see. How much is your ship worth? If I wanted to buy your ship... It's a C-class shuttle. 
Worth seven million, so I could have bought that one. I'm not doing any shuttles, so it doesn't matter. And he has nothing good, so... Pfft. But thank you, sir. I called in my ship, so we have to refill... Not that one. This one over here. There we go. So now we're full again. Don't need that. I think we're good. So we're full. Let's keep going. Maybe we'll get a shuttle to... Or not a shuttle. A fighter. Fighter. Gotta get a fighter to land for me. What if you must hide from frigates as they are, like, search ships? I mean, that's a cool rule to add. If you want to throw that in there, it'll make it more difficult. So you, anytime you see a, uh, a uh, frigate flying through the air, you have to get into a tunnel. Or you get into a cave. That would be interesting. You have to purposely hide anytime they, they show up. That would be an interesting thing to do. Or... Never be caught by the sentinels, so if the sentinels are walking around, you can never activate them. How did I break my jetpack? I'm just walking here. That would be pretty cool. Or, yeah, not activating the sentinels at all. If you activate them, you lose. Uh, will the sentinels report you? In this, in the rules we currently have, no. So, like, if the sentinels come after me, it's not a big deal. I just have to escape. Oh, buried cash. So it's not a big... Oh, look at that one! A bolt caster module. Holy cow, I have two bolt caster upgrades. I have another one over here. Wow. Technology Get rid of that. Oh, yeah, we need some uh, ferrite. I think we have enough ferrite dust, right? Yeah, we got a jetpack. Okay, good. Jetpack fixed. Uh, but yeah, so not in this in this uh, version of the rules. It's okay if you get seen by sentinels. It's not a big deal. So you can- Oh, I just destroyed all that for no reason. Hey! I'm walking here! <laughs> I was! Freaking whippy plant probably got me. I didn't see it, but it whipped me and broke my, uh... Broke my freaking jetpack. Uh, apparently breaking tech modules makes Jason get a New York <laughs> No, no, there's not a New York accent. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Saz. <laughs> oh, I gotta, I gotta remember, don't do an accent. Don't, no accents. <laughs> oh. Let's see, is there anything around here? We haven't ran into a crash ship in a while. Like, we did find two of them, but they had pilots earlier. We found two crash ships, and they were shuttles anyway, so it didn't matter. But we haven't found any other crashed, like, uh, fighters or anything. Even though I'm freaking looking for them! Maybe we should do that for a little bit. Just fly low and slow. Or we could go do my drop pods, because I have a whole bunch of, uh... I have four exosuit charts, so we could go upgrade my, uh, my inventory. Make sure I have enough room to pick up all the uh, stuff we're about to get. Dang it. I was hoping to get some more drop pod data. We got nav data. I can't use it. You can sell it for money, but they're only worth like a thousand. So it's not a big deal. I can get more for scans. Like oh, there you go. Yeah, 5,000. That was five uh, nav data right there. Uh, my brother who was using my account is a pro, but I'm not good at it, so I still want to do permanent with you. Dude, 100% when we do a uh, multiplayer stream. 100% get down in here. Now, I probably will be fiddling with my streaming uh, settings because, you know, <laughs> uh, my internet sucks. And I'm going to have to lower some settings to be more gentle on my, my high-speed internet that doesn't have a high speed. Uh, but yeah, we'll get that going. We'll have to do a, a uh, streaming, uh, No Man's Sky multiplayer stream. Oh, let me look over here. I just recently started playing again after a year or so. So far, after a week or so of playing, I haven't seen any of these, uh, whip time plants. Oh, dude, undercover, you're, you're lucky. 
So, if you have your visor up, you can look for that. Hazardous flora. And the whippy ones... That's the whippy one right there. So, you either get whippy ones, you get exploders. They're basically like a, a huge stock with like a big bulb on the top. And they expand out and then explode and put poison everywhere. I don't care about those. The whippy ones, I never see them until they hit me. Then, you know, you walk by it, you get smacked in the face and it destroys your jetpack. So, I don't like them. I don't like them at all. And I think specifically because those, for me at least, are harder to see. You really have to be looking to see the whippy plants. Like, the other ones are pretty obvious. They're larger, so they get, they're easier to see. Those whippy plants, man, they hide. Uh, I hate the Venus flight. Those ones are really tough, too. But for me, I'm just looking for the red bulbs, as I, I always look for the red bulbs. Because if I see those... And there's nothing underneath it, like if there's no ground or anything, you're like, all right, that means that's a, a, a fly trap for sure. Like, I don't think we have it. I think we only have whippy plants here. I don't think we have the fly trap. Yeah, that's a whippy one too. So yeah, these ones, you just look, you, you can't tell. Like I can't tell if you're just rushing around, you don't see that. That's not noticeable. The, uh, the fly trap ones that uh, Azerath is talking about, they're, they're on the ground and they're flat. So they're like this, and then they smash up on you. So they're kind of hard to see, but they also have a red glowing bulb of oxygen. So to kind of try to tempt you to go to it. I am, you know, unless I see the whole oxygen plant, I don't, I never go towards oxygen. So that's a benefit for me. But those whippy plants, they have no lights, no anything. So you don't know what they're, are you a, um, oh, we're circling. That means there's a trading outpost over here. Where are you at? Trading outpost around here somewhere. Oh, right there. Trading outpost, I bet you. Anytime you see a, any ship circling, that means they're trying to land. And so it's going to be a landing pad, which is a either a planetary archive, but they always go up in the air. So you can see those from far away. Or a trading, out, a trading outpost, which this is most likely because they're not as tall. So you can't, you, they are easier to hide behind like mountains. Planetary archives are huge, so it's really hard to miss those. And it looks like a trading outpost. Yep. Trading outpost. So we can't go there. All these guys would report us if we get too close. Yeah, trading outpost. Done. Uh, ball snap. Oh, God. I don't want that people bomb ball snappers. No, 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 no. No! There we go. That. Come on. Give me a good upgrade. Give me a uh, cold upgrade. Cold protection. Nanites. We're up to over 5,000 nanites. Plus, I can sell some of my upgrades, like my bolt caster upgrade and my. Uh, my Sentinel upgrade, they'll give me about three to four hundred each. So we're talking that's another thousand almost. So we're doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. I mean, I can also refine. You can refine the uh, salvage data and that will give you nanites, but it's not worth it. They don't give you a lot of nanites and they give you more money than nanites. So when it comes to making nanites, I would say... The best way is to sell upgrades so you can go to a pirate station, buy the randomized upgrades for money and then sell them for nanites or go to an abandoned building and you can get the larval core, the eggs and refine those into nanites. Those are way more worth it for nanites. So I refine my larval cores for nanites and I keep my uh, salvage data and I sell that for money. So they both make you nanites or money, whichever one you want. You can refine both and get nanites from them, or you can sell both and make money from it. You can get a good amount of money from the uh, larval cores, but you get more nanites for them. So, you know, that's why I do that. I was just thinking I probably need some ferrite dust. Just in case my, uh, my jetpack breaks again randomly because of a whippy plant. Uh, finding all the animals gets you good nanites, too. That is true. I think we've already done that here, though. So, yeah. So, I got... Oh, they don't even tell you. 
I think I got 2,000 nanites for doing it because I, the more animals you have on a planet, the higher the reward is for, you know, the higher amount of nanites you get for finding them all. I think I got 2,000 for this one. But yeah, I already did all that. I mean, I could upload all this too. So I could do this. And I got 161 nanites for that. So just uploading your, uh, your creature finds gives you nanites. If you find all the creatures on a, and, I mean, plants, animals, rocks, all that stuff will uh, also give you nanites. But if you find all the animals, they give you a bonus for finding all the animals. And it depends on how many animals are on a planet. The lower the number, the less uh, nanites you get as a reward. Uh, King Leonidas says, Jason, I have been wasting my time on the S-Class Living Frigate. I just figured out, uh, because I already had 30, and I needed to just... Oh, no! Not kidding, that time... If you already had 30, no! Dang it! That sucks, King Leonidas, dude. Ah, uh, dude, yeah, that was a big waste. If you already had, you're maxed out. Oh, dude. That is the worst feeling, when you don't know that you've maxed out, and you just keep farming for it, and you're like, Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> I just wasted all that time for nothing because I maxed. That sucks. Um, and then we got Rick Jelly, so you can find all the. Oh, yeah, Rick, I already got that one. Undercover Hat says, Oh boy, besides one of those gas mining things, are there any easy ways to get oxygen these days? I remember being able to buy them from ship owners at the space stations before. Yeah, they don't sell it anymore. There's no oxygen being sold. Unless you turn down your difficulty. So you can adjust your difficulty. If you turn your difficulty down to easy, they will sell oxygen. However, if you don't want to turn your difficulty down or you don't want to mess with the difficulty settings, uh, the, the only ways that I know of is the gas exploder plants and just go for farming. You want to farm up your uh, oxygen. So if you have the... Um, the uh, analyzer right here. If you go to the uh, space anomaly and you get the uh, survey uh, visor, look for gases, look for ga uh, oxygen, and just make an oxygen farm. That's the easiest way. Easiest way is to make an oxygen farm because then you can always go back every once in a while and just pick up oxygen. That's what I always recommend. If you make an oxygen farm, you always know where to go. You can stop off and get a whole bunch. It's It takes a little bit of dedication, but... Once you set it up, it's good forever. So you don't have to worry about, oh, it's gonna run out or whatever. Nope, you're good. No? No? So yeah, it, it takes a little bit of setup, but it's worth it. It is worth it. Did I go to that unknown building? I thought I did. No? Could have sworn I went to that unknown building over there. But if I did, it should have marked it for me. Let's check it. All right, so if you see an unknown building with sentinels nearby, probably a resource depot or a manufacturing facility. But let's look. Let's look. Let's check. I would say this one's farther away, so this is a manufacturing facility. If they're closer together, that means resource depot. Um, Manufacturing facility. Yep, that's what it is. So, in general, the Sentinels will patrol the outer edge of the manufacturing facility. The resource depot is very small, so all the uh, Sentinels are right next to it. So, that's generally how you can see it. Or how you can kind of figure that out. Ah, uh, yeah, you did. Monument, my bad. Oh, no worries, man. I always double check it, because if you get close enough and you look at it, it should mark it. So, now if I look back at it... It'll tell me manufacturing facility because if you look at it and it identifies it, it's always marked for you because the game has marked it for you. So that's why whenever I see unknown building, generally that means you haven't been there. Generally. Every once in a while, the game just doesn't register because it's, you know, it's No Man's Sky. So it wouldn't be No Man's Sky without the bugs. So every once in a while, it does not register. So it could have been, but I always like to double check. Oh, we're going south. Dun dun dun! Nobody wants to land for me. I just need one more. One more fighter.
Get all the this patch of uh, sodium. I love it. And these ones count differently than the other ones. So if you see a whole bunch of the same plant together, oxygen, sodium, they count as a different plant versus the single ones that are out there. So I've scanned this one, and it's called Milky Oxidium. Milky Oxidium, right? If I find a separate plant out here in the middle of nowhere, like this one over here, This one is a Tenki Mum. Tenki Mum. So it's step. They're separate. They are totally different plants. So you can use that to your advantage. Whenever there's a milestone or an objective to scan different plants, those count as two. <laughs> and, you know, you can always scan the whippy plants. Any of the hazardous flora, they count as plants as well. So you can scan that and get a plant. So that's the advantage for plant life. Whenever they tell you to scan for plants, you can get a lot of them on one planet simply because you can scan hazardous flora, oxygen, sodium, uh, the jetpack uh, plants, the blue ones. You can get those as well. There's no way. 40 million! Man! Okay, now you guys are just being jerks about it. <laughs> we haven't had a fighter land in a while. I have a feeling they're just trying to be a jerk. They're like, oh, you wanna- you wanna, uh, you wanna uh, shuttle the land? No problem. We'll make sure they're only gonna be, like, uh, ships you cannot afford. 40 million! And this is why haulers- if you're gonna make a custom hauler, a, uh, uh, a customized hauler, it is the most expensive ship to make. So it's a B-class, but the reason why it's so expensive is look at all that inventory. Look at that. It's beautiful. And then 40 million. 40 million. <laughs> There's no way. Uh, near Thetis, yes. How do I get Gamma Root? Go to a, uh, go to a radiation planet. And then if you're looking around, like, I, I'm on a radiation planet right now. So, Gamma Root should be a plant. So, you'll see right there. Gamma Weed, right there. So, go to a radiation planet, an irradiated planet, and then look for Gamma Weed. If you're flying around, if you're flying in the air, it'll look yellow from the sky. So, from the atmosphere, it looks yellow. If you're on foot, it's called Gamma Weed, right there. That's what you're looking for. Uh, thank you, Beba Bum. There you go. Da -da -da -da. Hey, Jason, is there any way to scrap and sell a multi tool? Yes, Michael. Yes. Okay, there. I think Beba Bum already got you on that one. In the uh, in the space anomaly, you. That's the only place I thought when they overhauled these space stations they would add that. They did not. It's still only found in the space anomaly. Only there. So that's the only place to scrap your multi-tools. And if you scrap multi-tools, they, they give you items based on the type of multi-tool. So, if you scrap a Sentinel multi-tool, you get Sentinel stuff. If you scrap an Atlantid multi-tool, the new Atlas multi-tools, they will give you the Atlantid, um... Oh god, what is that currency called that the, um... That the new race uses? They give you some money that the, uh, new, um... Oh, God. My brain's not working. Underwater protection module. Are you freaking serious? I don't need water protection. Um, the... It starts with an A. Void moats! Not an A. A V. Yeah, void moats. They will give you some void moats for the Atlantid multi-tools. So each multi-tool, depending on what kind it is, it will give you different things, different pieces, parts. But in general, if you just scrap any multi-tool, it's based on the level. So if you scrap a C-level multi-tool, it'll give you C-level upgrades for your multi-tool. If you scrap an A-level multi-tool, it'll give you A-level upgrades. And then when you get into the specialty multi-tools, like the Sentinel one will give you Sentinel upgrades. The uh, Atlantid multi-tools will give you void motes, things like that. 
I don't want you to land anyway. So I got some upgrades to sell. When we get to a pirate station, I'll be able to sell some freaking upgrades. Uh, thank you, Gary. Yes, the autophage. Yes, autophage. Good lord, my brain's not working today, guys. Yes, the autophage. I was so excited about them, and I don't remember their names. No, no. Oh, there's a building over here. Let's see. So they still mark crash ships as unknown buildings, you guys. So it is technically classified as an unknown building. Now, they're very rare to find. You might not find them, but they still come up as that. So if you're looking around through your visor, like that's a transmission tower. Uh, but it could be a crash ship. Let me get close enough. That way my, uh, my visor marks it. There we go. Let me mark another location real fast. Is that marked? Yep. Transmission tower it is. There we go. I don't want you holler. Keep going. Send your fighter friends to come over and sell stuff to me. I'll take your fighter friends. There we go. Get some buried technology. Make some money. We're up to 12 million. Up to 12 million. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're almost to 22. <laughs> Whippy plant. Stay over there. Uh, still, he says, hey, Jason, are the Atlantid multi-tools hard to get you? Not really. I mean, well, it depends on what you mean by hard. But uh, as long as you've beaten the main storyline, basically, you've done all the... All the requirements to get to the autophage. So that is basically beating the the storyline. You don't have to fully complete it, but you're basically there. Like, you might as well finish the storyline anyway. The Artemis storyline. You don't have to go all the way through it, but you need to get like the 95% done. So why not just do the last 5% anyway? And you have to do that. You have to visit a... You have to do a trace of metal. So that is a... Depending on if you're on the Switch or if you're on a uh, regular console... You have to do Trace of Metal, which is found at settlements. Unless you're on Switch, then it's a random mission that triggers. And you have to visit a harmonic camp that is in the corrupted uh, system. Once you've done that, the autophage should show up for you. And then once you have the autophage, you're good to go. You can start finding them pretty easy. You still need to go to only Korvac systems. And I don't know if it needs to be a corrupted system or not. I think it's just any Corvax system should do it. But it might need to be a Corvax corrupted system. I'm not positive on that. Uh, but yeah, they're all over the place. So they're not that hard to find. Like, the royal multi-tools, I would argue the royal multi-tools are harder to find. You need to have a sentinel pillar to get a royal multi-tool. As far as I know, royals are not in... Uh, general rotation. They might have changed that. But as far as I know, royals are only found at sentinel pillars. They're not in rotation anywhere else. So you have to find a sentinel pillar for that to happen. Whereas the Atlantid multi-tools are in Corvax uh, systems and you just need to find the, uh, you just need to finish the storyline. You know, if you're at the end game of No Man's Sky, you can get them. It might be misremembering some of those details though so don't 100 percent trust me because i am not a smart man uh stewie says what are the sentinel pillars so if you defeat all five waves of the sentinel like if the sentinels attack you get through all five waves till you get to a walker the big gigantic guys after you defeat them it should mark the location of a sentinel pillar basically it's like the home computer on a uh, planet that controls the sentinels and you can turn them off if you find a sentinel pillar. Now, you can also just fly low and slow, and they look like a big old pillar that's red in the middle of a planet. So if you're flying low and slow and you just go around a planet, you'll eventually run into one. It's hard to find them, but you can. Of course the shuttle lands! There's a fighter right there! 
but the shuttle lands for me. It's like they know I just need one more ship. It's insane. All of a sudden, all the shuttles are landing for me. Are you kidding me? You guys are killing me. It seriously feels like they know. I, I'm i ready. I have one more ship I need, and that's it. Do I have anything in my uh, starship? No. So, yeah, that's it. That's all I need to sell. But, yeah, the Sentinel Pillars were added with the Sentinel update, I think, back in 2022. So, the Sentinel Pillars are really, really awesome. They control the Sentinels on a planet. So, you can turn them off. If you want to not deal with the Sentinels, you can totally turn them off. And you will randomly find uh, pillar charts. They're not common, and as far as I know, you cannot buy them. So they are a random, random up or random item you can find, and they will mark the location of a sentinel pillar. But the easiest way to find them is go through, kill all the sentinels, and when you get to level five and you kill a walker, it'll basically turn off the sentinels and mark the location of a pillar for you. Uh, but I didn't see any multi-tools. Yes, it's called a, uh, retrieve the technology. It, it doesn't call it a multi-tool. It says just retrieve technology from it. So that's what it means if you want to uh, extract technology from the pillar. It's basically you're extracting a multi-tool. And it's not a guarantee that you're going to get a, uh, a royal multi-tool. It's not a guarantee. You could, more, more than likely, you're going to find a regular multi-tool in there. So, a royal multi-tool is a rare occurrence. Yeah, I've seen one of those. Yep. The Atlantid multi-tools are on the monoliths. Other than uh, that, Jason is 100% right. Yeah, monoliths. Yes. So, you have to be in a Corvax system. You have to go to the monolith. And it's not the monolith itself. There is a special uh, pedestal for the Atlantid multi-tools. So, don't go to the main thing for the monolith. On the side of it, you'll see a little purple uh, light. And if we, when you approach it, the pedestal comes up for it. That's for the Atlantid multi-tool. For the Sentinel multi-tools, or for the, uh, not for the Sentinels, for the uh, Royal multi-tools, you have to go to a Sentinel pillar. Anyway, <laughs> so that's all of that. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of cool stuff in No Man's Sky if you want to dig and look. And there are advantages of getting all of it, but... End of the day, you don't need any of this stuff. You want to land for me? You don't want to land for me? Oh, I don't want you. 24 million, I don't need you. So, but at the end of the day, you don't need any of that stuff. And if you upgrade a normal multi-tool, like if I upgrade, if I fully upgrade my regular multi-tool I start out with, I, I add all my inventory slots and I upgrade it to a level S, it's just as good as the other multi-tools. There are advantages to it. Like the Sentinel multi-tool, you can get a, a double mining beam, and that's kind of an advantage there. But overall, they do basically the same thing once you get to the S-Class. So there's going to be differences. You can max out them differently depending on the supercharged slots and all that stuff. There's a whole bunch of randomized chance, you know, you know, uh, uh, procedural generation that is involved in that. But as a whole, in general, they're all, once you get to an S-Class, you're good. Dun, 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 dun. So yeah, you, like my main multi-tool on my main save is a Sentinel multi-tool because I get a double laser, so I get twice as much and doesn't overheat. But I have good supercharged slots on it, so that's why I kept it. So it, it basically I can do 34,000 damage on it. And that's not the most. I've seen people, they have over 100,000 damage on a multi-tool, which is insane. Once you get past, like, 15,000 damage, it's way overkill. You don't need more than that. Sentinels are just going to go... They're not going to be a problem after about 15,000. So I got mine up to 37,000, and it's more than enough. Way, way more than enough. You don't need more than that. You don't need that much. Uh, curious deposits. I don't have a... I do not have an advanced mining beam. Dang it! Uh, no buildings here. Jason, can we play multiplayer on Monday night? It's probably going to be Valheim night there, Hunter. We do Valheim, unless the Ashlands update comes out. 
for the public test. Then I will probably switch it up to be No Man's Sky. But generally, Mondays are Valheim streams. So we'll be doing Valheim that day. Dun, 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 dun. And Hunter, if you're really, really excited about that, make sure to join the Discord and share your, um, your friend code because No Man's Sky is finicky. We might need to add each other as a friend on No Man's Sky. That way you can join my game or I can join your game. So in general, that's what you need to do just to make sure. Like it should work if we add one or another. Like if I add you to my list, I should be able to join you. But No Man's Sky is very finicky. Sometimes it doesn't work that way. Uh, my multi-tool says potential damage is 21k, but when I shoot a sentinel, it says three to 400 damage. I don't know what that deal is, in it, to be honest. Unlucky ball. So your potential damage is, I believe, that is your total damage. So, you know, when you shoot, you're just doing one shot. But you also shoot in a burst. I don't know if you noticed that. So if every shot hits, that's how much damage you're doing. So you might see different numbers depending on when you hit it, how you hit it. But it's going to be your overall damage. You could, you could think of it as damage per minute. Damage per minute. So each shot might be, uh, you know, three or four hundred. But if you, if you go after a minute, that's how much damage you would do. So think of it that way. It's damage over time. There we go. As far as I know. I could be wrong on that, too. I'm wrong a lot, so... Never trust me 100%. I'm I'm right a lot of the times, but not always. Unless, you know, you talk to me and I'm going to tell you I'm right all the time. 60% of the time, I'm right all the time. <laughs> oh. Dun dun dun. Oh man, I better refill my uh, my battery here. Holy cow! That is running around with no radiation protection going. Good lord! So I'm thinking maybe we switched to, the, to running on foot because I thought maybe I would run into more uh, more outlaw traders so I could buy one of their ships, and that did happen. However, the outlaws that are landing for me are either too expensive or there are ships I don't need. I want a fighter. So at this point, I'm locked into a fighter because I already have multiple fighters. So it, it makes sense. I have to go with fighter. Not you. Not you. Uh, oh, my navigational marker. <laughs> so at this point, maybe we should fly around a little bit and see if I can find some crash ships that way. Because, yeah, we're... I've been running around for a while. No luck. So let's fly around a little bit. Put some of these away. That way they're out of my inventory. Get rid of that. Oh, yeah, we can also look for our... Uh, we can upgrade our suit. Let's do that while we're looking. We can upgrade our suit. Drop pod detected. Where are you at? There we go. So let's go over here. I was right. You were going to build a fighter. Yes. Well, I mean, at first we didn't know what we were going to do, but we have multiple fighters at this point. So I'm kind of locked in. Kind of locked in because, yeah, if I would have seen a whole bunch more uh, explorers that would have landed for me or whatever, then maybe we would have gone that way. There is no way we're doing a hauler. Hauler, unless we find a whole bunch of crashed haulers, they're too expensive to buy. Haulers are very expensive. So it's more of, it, was it going to be a fighter or an explorer? And it looks like it's going to be fighter because I have multiple fighters. I just need one more and I'll be complete. I'll be able to actually scrap it and uh, make my cool fighter. Oh, come on, really? Oh, now, now you want to be right there. Click this link. There you go. Yes, the Discord is above in the live chat. If you want to join the Discord, it's right there. So jump on that link for the Discord. 
and that'll let you get into the, into the Discord. You can you can chat about No Man's Sky there. Make sure you accept the rules. That way you know what's going on. Talk about No Man's Sky. Share screenshots of cool pets or ships that you find. And you can share friend codes. That way, if anyone else is there, you want to join up, you guys can do that. But always be wary. Don't click any links in there. You never know who's in the uh, Discord. So just a word of caution. Never trust anyone on the internet. That just has a rule. <laughs> I need some plants. You not count? Are you serious? You don't count, huh? All right, well, I guess I'll use you. Is anyone still doing community nights? Yes, Ricey should be. I mean, unless he put out a notification. I know that Ricey, sometimes his real life schedule gets in the way of No Man's Sky schedule, like his work and things like that. But for the most part, uh, uh, Ricey Starship Emporium and Flowery Squirrel are doing community nights. As far as I'm aware, they do community nights. Hey. Uh, I assume Ricey still does. Yep. Don't need salt. Gonna need more of this, though. Give me a whole bunch of carbon. I'm gonna need to make some uh, life support shells. Let me get some money out of this. Get my 5,000. They asked me uh, to fill out a bunch of stuff. I don't know about filling out a bunch of stuff. Usually, if you just go to the rules, it'll tell you what you need to do over there, Hunter. Now, if you don't have a Discord uh, profile at all, you might need to make a profile to be on Discord. So that is going to be a thing. If you don't have one already, you're probably going to have to make one for Discord. Uh, specifically sign up for Discord if you don't have it and if you're comfortable with it. If not, that's totally fine too. But that's the easiest way to share friend codes. Uh, da -da -da -da. There we go. Make sure this is filled up. Oh, I'm going to need to find some uh, some uranium before we go because I'm out of uranium. Where's my uranium? Yep, you're right there. Boom. And there's also a building over here. Let's see if that building is a uh, maybe a crash ship. That's not a crash ship. Oh, look, it's an ancient. Okay, we have a uh, an ancient ruin. So it's not a buried ruin, so I can't really get anything out of this. Yeah, there's no items going to be over there. So I would, if it was a buried ruin, I'd be able to dig up the uh, cargo out of it or the uh, treasure box and get some good stuff out of it. I have never played this game before. Is it good? I'm new to this gaming thing. Dr. Frost, this is a very awesome game. If you're into or if you're interested in a game that uh, makes you build and survive, then absolutely. There are other games out there if you want to do like, if you just want to run around and shoot other people, you have Call of Duty, things like that. This is more geared towards you have a, you're, uh, you're alone on a planet and you have to build upgrades to help your character survive. And then you start upgrading your ship and you can go farther to different places. Very, very awesome. I would highly recommend jumping in and trying it out. It's a, it's an amazing game I've been playing for seven years. So highly, highly recommend it. But it's not everyone's flavor. Some people don't like survival crafting games where you have to upgrade your character, things like that. They're not interested in that. So that might not be your, your like fun factor. Uh, have a great rest of your day, Azrath. Yes, thank you so much for hanging out, guys. And seriously, f uh, go ch follow, uh, follow and subscribe to Az if you guys are interested in No Man's Sky, Star Citizen, awesome, cool stuff like that. Definitely go follow Azrath Gaming. Dang it. I just want you guys to land with a fighter for me. 
I don't see anything green. Nope, okay, good. Just double checking. Do I have any more uh, uranium? Nope. Silver, silver, copper. Silver, copper, uranium over there. Okay. I'm just trying to get uranium because that's good for fuel for your starship. And if I'm going to be, if I will be landing and, you know, taking off a whole bunch, I'm going to need a lot of, uh, launch fuel. There needs to be a setting for no, no, uh, starship, uh, launch. Yes, dude, I wish. If we have a no, uh, starter ship. That'd be amazing. Cause we do a lot of that. No starter ship challenge kind of stuff. But I mean, I mean, yeah. Because they also, they let you toggle on the setting for permadeath, so why not have a no starter ship challenge, right? So it would make sense. Totally. I'm, I'll get behind that. I would love for them to do that. Oh, this uranium is right. Whoa, look at this. I got some. Oh, no, 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 no. Not the big one. So with the terrain manipulator, I know everyone here probably already knows this, but if you're new to No Man's Sky... In the beginning, you get this terrain manipulator, which lets you dig up, like, minerals in the ground. However, no, not a lot of people know to begin with. They don't tell you that there are different sizes to it. So, look how big the orb gets. Big and small, right? So, the bigger it gets, the more area it destroys, but it gives you less resources. The smaller it is, the, the longer it takes you to dig, but it gives you more resources. So, if you're trying to get up a resource like this... Use the smallest version, and it'll give you the most resources from that deposit. It's going to take you longer, and it uses more fuel, but you get more resources for that. If you're trying to build a base, and you want to flatten an area or just dig a hole, use the largest one, because it's faster, and it uses less fuel to do that. That's why they give you multiple sizes. Most of the time, you're not going to be, you know, trying to dig up a, a deposit like this. You know, if you just want to get underground, if you want to go into a cave or whatever, you don't want to use a smaller one. Doesn't make sense. It's going to take you forever to get down in there. Like, if I wanted to get down to... Uh, down in the cave here. If I go to the smallest one, look how long that takes. And I can't even fit down that hole. It's so small, I can't even fit down there. But, if I use the largest one over here... It's just... Look at that. Huge tunnel. Get down to the cave quickly. So that's why they have different sizes. That uranium? Oh, that's copper. Okay. No? Dang it. So by default, it's in the medium size. If you just switch to the tool, to the, uh, the, uh, terrain manipulator tool by default it's a medium size and you can go up or down if you want to but it's by default medium and that's generally what i use but if you want to get the most resources you want to use the smallest one you possibly can nope nope refuel that beautiful there we go that's good that's good all righty so we have some fuel for our ship now, so we should be able to fly around no problem, launch fuel. Let's get over here. So you're seeing that size matters only in No Man's Sky. <laughs> it's small but mighty. Small but mighty. No, not that one. This one. Oh, yeah. And speaking of that, while I'm thinking about it, let's move all this over to our ship. That way we clear out our inventory. There we are. I see a dot. What is this? Oh, it's on that planet. Okay, so that's probably our other ship. So it's too far away. Nope, don't want to need that one.
Let's see. We could probably fire off this map and see where it comes from. There it is. Drop pod over there. It's fine if I send my Discord numbers in th uh, chat, though. What? I don't know if you want to do... Yeah, don't do that. Don't share your uh, numbers for Discord. Don't do that. Don't share any personal information, and I would include your Discord numbers. Because someone can log into your profile with that. Don't, so don't do that, uh, Hunter. Don't do that. Uh, is there an upgrade to the terrain, uh, terraform? No, I wish there's none. There's none at all. You only get that thing and that's it. So you just install your terrain manipulator and that's it. That's the only thing. There's nothing to make it better or worse or faster or slower or whatever. Nothing. None of that stuff. I wish, but nope, they don't have any upgrades for that. Not yet. Maybe in a future upgrade update, they will. But I don't know why you would. It's like, I mean, I can understand. I would love it if they let us, like, mine more materials, like, more resources from the, uh, from the deposits. That would be awesome. Maybe, uh, like, an efficiency upgrade or something. That would be cool. But other than that, I don't know. Like, what would you throw in there? Oh, Jason, can you, can I put my Discord numbers in chat? No, no, no. Don't do it. Don't do it. No, you're not. You're not dumb. You're not dumb. You just don't know. That's fine. You're not. You're allowed to not know, but don't do that, Hunter. Don't do that. Uh, all right, I'm off. Beeble Bump, thank you so much for hanging out. And guys, follow Beeble Bump. Beeble Bump's channel, his main channel. He does No Man's Sky. He does Space Engineers. Awesome, awesome channel to follow. And on his second channel, the B side, he does Valheim and other survival crafting games. If you're interested in that, both amazing channels you should be following. There we go. So now we should be good to upgrade. So do we see any ships around here? I don't see anybody. Get that in here, over there. Let's fly around a little bit. Let's head south. See if we can find a crash ship. All we need is one more. So there's what you're looking for. That's gamma weed right there. Gamma root. So if you're flying around a radiation planet, an irradiated planet, that's what you're looking for right there. You just fly around and if you see these uh, yellow glowing uh, flowers, that's going to be them. And they're all over. If you fly low enough, and make sure you fly slow, because if you're flying too fast, it won't have time to load in, because uh, No Man's Sky only shows you things it, when it has time to load them. If you're going fast, it won't even take the time to load them, because why? You're flying too fast. You obviously don't care. Uh, what's Jason's current objective? We're trying to find another fighter ship. That way I can scrap three of them and make my own. So we're on a fugitive run. And the, in order to leave the system, in order to even leave anywhere, the uh, system itself, in order to get to another system, we need to build our own ship. That way it's unregistered. And so in order to build a ship, you need three parts. You need the cockpit, you need the wings, and the engine. And a reactor, but we can buy the reactor, so don't worry about that. So what we're looking for is, and you have to have that same similar ship. You cannot scrap any ship and get wings. You have to, if you scrap a fighter, you get fighter wings. If you scrap an, uh, an explorer, you get explorer wings. And so you need to use the same ship, the same type, to get all those pieces. So I need to find another fighter ship, because I need one more and we should be good. I should have all my pieces, my parts, for uh, building. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm on the lookout. And once we do that, we're golden. We can go anywhere we want. We can get the heck out of here because we're unregistered. We're free.
That is a shelter. We don't need that. And we're a fugitive, so we can't, like, we can't get a chart to find crash ships. There's a, uh, free cargo upgrade. We can't talk to aliens and get their, uh, their ship. We can talk to outlaws, but we have to wait for an outlaw to land. We can't just talk to any alien to get their ship because they might rat us out because we're a fugitive. Uh, building on the left. What about just waiting in the space station? Or right, I can't be in the space station, unlucky ball, because the space station will, uh, they'll alert the authorities if they see me in there. So, we have to build a ship, so we have to go to the space station, but the, um, the way we're doing the roleplay, because that's the only place to go, I wish there was another place to build them, but you can't. So, in order to bend the rules a little bit, we're allowed to go to the space station, however, when we go to the space station, it's only to scrap and to build a ship, and we have to build a new ship in order to leave and change our uh, our uh, our appearance. That way they don't know when we leave. And we have to be as quick as possible because the longer we are there, the uh, more likely the authorities are going to be to find us. So we're trying to do it fast. We're also leaving with a different ship and a different appearance. We're changing our armor. We're changing all of that stuff because we can't have them following us. That's not ferrite dust. That looks like a plant to me. All right. I guess it's ferrite dust. Done, done, and done. Can you get wings from a KFC fighter? No. Sorry, I had to. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That was good. <laughs> no, I wish. So we we did have a building over on the left as well. So we had a uh, we have a uh, drop pod here, but we also had one over here. Oh, that's eight minutes away. No, I thought there was one closer. No, I thought there was a building like right over here. Oh no, that's what it was. A uh, radar or a beacon. So that's the building. We can't go. We can't use that. So we're basically it's a role playing challenge and you're you're playing as a fugitive so you basically try to think like okay what can get you caught talking to aliens going to the space station and just hanging out the authorities are going to find you so we're trying to do anything to avoid any of those situations but i mean going to an outlaw a pirate system okay that makes you more safe because that's an outlaw system you don't have to worry about uh the authorities there so that's the ideal, but in order to leave, to get there, we need to go in with an unregistered, uh, ship. A ship that they're not tracking, that's not been licensed. And the only way to do that is to build our own. At least in this scenario. That is... not a... Oh, it's a market. You can see from the ball, the com ball right there. trying to find our ship so uh we went over this earlier but if you just joined if you're flying in your ship in first person mode the radar right there ships will come up doesn't matter if they're crashed or if they're inhabited like they're flying around any ship will come up as a, a white square so if you're flying along and you see a white square pop up it's it's a really good idea to investigate because it could be a crashed ship that you can claim now it could have a pilot. It could just be a ship that's flying around randomly. They will pop up. But you don't know until you look for them. There's another building right there that didn't mark. Thank you. That's a trading outpost. We don't want to go there. We'll get caught. So we should be good now. We went around it. No, not that one. Here we go. And that is just a save beacon. Yep, it looks like just a save beacon. Mm, 
Not seeing anything here. We're just kind of flying low and slow. Uh, Hunter says, Jason, what's your favorite character in No Man's Sky? My favorite character is Polo. I love the uh, Gek is my favorite alien race in the No Man's Sky, and Polo is the coolest guy. So if you play No Man's Sky, and you kind of go through the uh, storyline of No Man's Sky, you find out the history between Polo and Nada. Am I frozen? What is this? Oh, okay. Yeah, my, my ship just stopped. Like, look at this. I have, that's a weird bug. Yeah, it should be flying like that. That's kind of weird. Anyway, if you get the history behind Polo and Nada, you find out Polo is pretty cool. Pretty badass. So I love Polo. Polo is my favorite. Is that an abandoned building? <gasps> abandoned building! Yes! Okay, we can get a whole bunch of nanites from here. So abandoned buildings are abandoned. And so we don't have to worry about aliens here because there's no one here. They're abandoned. However, the benefit to an abandoned building is... Right here, these larval cores. You can sell these for money after you crack open the whispering eggs, or you can refine it for nanites. I gotta make sure I have enough room in my inventory. Yes, I do. Um, let me double check my rules. I believe we can go into um, abandoned buildings. Abandoned buildings can land at and use. Yes, yes. Okay, so we can use these ones. They're abandoned, so that's why you're allowed to use them. I just wanted to double check. Um. Uh, oh, I like Apollo. Apo Polo is pretty cool. Polo is pretty awesome. He's my favorite character. So, on my main save, I always use the Polo badge because Polo is awesome. Uh, in my main ship, I use the Polo uh, bobblehead so I can look at Polo all the time whenever I'm flying. So yeah, Polo is awesome. I like Polo. Not as cool. Apollo is cool. Artemis is cool, but they're not as cool. As Polo. <laughs> Polo is the coolest. So now, to make this easier, you can dig a hole underneath the nest and then pop the eggs and uh, let them fall to you. You can do that. However, I like to live dangerously. So it's not a challenge unless you're doing it the more difficult way. So that's why I run around in a circle trying to avoid all the monsters. No, oh, my egg went through the ground. Sometimes they will glitch out and fall through the ground anyway, even if you don't want them to. But yeah, so I like the challenge part of this. Like, oh, okay. And if you need to, pull out your visor and look around, and it'll show you, okay, there's eggs over there, eggs over there. And we're just trying to collect all these eggs because we can refine them and get a whole bunch of nanites. Oh, there's my egg. Oh, God. So I've found that even on the extreme difficulty, they do a lot of damage, don't get me wrong. But as long as you're moving, they have a hard time tracking and hurting you, hitting you. So just keep moving. Don't stand still. If you stand still, that's when they catch you. Dang it, lost that one too. So you do have to you have to like slow down a little bit to pop the eggs, but just slow down enough and then move. And if, they're, if they crowd you, if there's too many, get out of the area. Let them separate a little bit. Come on over here, boys. And now that they're away from these eggs over here, I can just hop over and kind of get my advantage of, ha ha, you guys didn't know I could do that. And then that guy spit on me. Hey, don't spit on me. Dun dun dun! I think that's all the eggs. Let's check it. Yep, so there's no more red icons with the egg. So there's no more eggs. So now let's, uh, let's start refining this stuff. Get inside a building because the enemies can't come into the building at all. And just start, uh, refining this baby. Oh yes. So, because we're in extreme mode, we can only do uh, 150 at a time. So, we can only do three at a time. That's 300. 
450. So you get a lot of nanites this way, but you know, it's just a pain in the butt. Or I could sell it for 200,000, but again, it is more worth it, to me at least, to refine them down to nanites, because nanites are harder to get, and I can get more money for my, uh, my buried technology versus my eggs. So that's why I use the eggs for uh, nanites, and I use the buried technology for money. It's the flip, ver uh, the versa reason for the, uh, what's it called? For the buried technology. They give you nanites, but they only give you a little bit. Like, if I tried to, like, I think I have buried technology, right? No, I don't. Maybe in my ship? Yeah, but it's too far away, I think. Yeah, it's too far away. But yeah, if I try to refine the uh, buried technology, you get like 15 uh, nanites versus the 150 <laughs> or the uh, 50 of them that you get for each larval core. I don't even know what we're up to. I lost track of the number, what we're up to. We're close to a thousand. Close to a thousand. So we are at 6,700 nanites. We're going to be able to get a good engine when we finally get our, uh, our ship made. Whenever we can get our freaking fighter. Here we go. Open the containers. There we go. All right, we're out of here. We'll be able to get a good reactor. Or use them as an eggs to cook. You can cook with them as well, but that feels like a blasphemy. Like, if you're not going to get nanites or money from it, why are you cooking with them? Oh, Lord. Like, you can cook and then go up to, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Ramsey on the, uh, Space Anomaly, but no. No. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> you can totally make food out of it, but no. <laughs> Can you go to an uh, outload station? I don't know what an outload station is. You mean a space station? Or an abandoned station? If you're talking about an abandoned station, yes. We can go to an abandoned station. However, if you go to an abandoned system and go to the station itself, you're allowed to land and you're allowed to use the terminal. However, once you've done that, you have to leave the system because once you activate the terminal, then the authorities know where you are. You're basically connecting to the system, so you don't want to do that. Oh, there's a, uh, there's a thing there. So, I mean, it's not worth it, really. You can, because it's abandoned, but you're alerting the authorities to your location, so you don't want to. I mean, I don't want to. I don't think there's any benefit. Like, I would rather land on a pirate system, because a pirate system has all the advantages of an abandoned system, but you don't have to worry about the authorities, because the outlaws will not tell the authorities you're there. Now, if you attack the pirates in a pirate system, then they'll tell the authorities, because, I mean, yeah, you're being a jerk. Not getting any, uh, any white dots. There's a transmission tower. So if I went inside this building and I activated it, it would show me where a crash ship was, but it would also alert the authorities to my location and I would get caught. So you don't want that. Oh, you would get 250 nanites for five radiant shards. Best, easiest way to get them. Yes, dude. There you go. You could do that as well. The, um, you can also go after the, uh, the brains. If you have a whole bunch of the, uh, the crash ships, the crash sentinel ships, they give you a lot. So yeah, the, when we get to a corrupted system, we'll be able to get a ton of nanites. Radiant shards, the inverted mirrors. I think the inverted mirrors... Do they refine down to nanites? I'm pretty sure they do. I think the only thing that does not is the, um, is the, uh, oh, what is it? The spider brain. What is that called? Um, the core that you get from the arachnid core, I think, or whatever that is. That does not refine down, I don't think. That's an abandoned, or uh, that's a manufacturing facility. Don't want to mess with that. Oh. Uh, I prefer salvage scrap from derelict freighters over runaway mold. Yes, dude. Tainted metal. Tainted metal. Get that tainted metal. That is way... That is the best way to get a whole bunch of nanites. Tainted metal. I love using tainted metal to get the... Um, to get the uh, nanites out of it. So good. Two to one. 
One tainted metal gives you two nanites. You can easily find 500 tainted metal to get a thousand nanites. Easy. And you just do those derelict freighters. Because, yeah, you get them out of runaway mold, but again, runaway mold doesn't give you a lot for each one, so you have to get a whole bunch of it. And because my inventory is very limited to 300, it's not worth it in extreme mode. Like, if you're doing runaway mold, it is not worth it in extreme. Your inventory is way too limited. I'd have to fill up my entire inventory with one runaway mold and just slowly refine it. Not worth it. Whereas if I had tainted metal, 300 tainted metal turns into 600 nanites. Totally worth it. I think one uh, runaway mold is what? Is that five? One equals five. So you need a whole bunch. Oh, there's a planetary archive. So you'd need a whole bunch of runaway mold. Or no, no. I think five runaway mold equals one nanite. Something like that. I don't know what the conversion rate is. I can't remember because I'm not smart. I see a whole bunch of ships, but those are going to be flying towards the... Yeah, see, I hate it when I fly by a, a planetary archive or a trading outpost because then you don't know which one is a, a crash ship or which one is a flying ship. It should be good. Here we are. Back to normal. Uh, four years ago, I did a ship scrapping session for nanites. Now with my co uh, comeback, I use two runaway mold bases. It's doing the trick and it's pretty. I mean, yeah, if you have a runaway mold base, heck yeah, that's the way to do it. Or, I mean, you could do a silver and gold to make platinum and then platinum into nanites. You could do that as well. Uh, there are a ton of way to make, ways to make nanites. You can also... If you have a money farm, make a whole bunch of, like, money, stasis devices, whatever, scrapping ships, and then go to a pirate station, buy, for money, the random packages, the technology packages, and just keep selling that over and over and over again. That does not look like an abandoned building to me. That is not. Nope, keep going. I was going to say, if that's an abandoned building, we get another thousand nanites. Easy. Easy. But yeah, the fastest way that I have found, if you have a lot of cash, go to a pirate system, buy the upgrade uh, packages, because they're randomized. You don't know what you're going to get, but you don't care. You're just buying the package to open them up and then sell the upgrade. Because you can sell the upgrades for 300 to 400 a pop. So you're getting thousands of nanites. Easy. As long as you have the money, you're going to be spending millions of units. to. You're basically converting your units into nanites, essentially. Really, dude? Why you gotta do that to me? Oh, look at that. There is a resource depot right there. Let's land. We're gonna let some traders come and talk to us. And hopefully we can get a uh, freaking fighter ship to land for us. So before we do that, though... Let's take on this. Oh, that's way too close. You want to be far enough away. That way they can't see you. If the Sentinels can't see you, they just freak out and go, What's going on? I mean, unless you shoot them. If you shoot the Sentinel, then they know where it came from. Enriched copper, copper? I'll take that. Or carbon? I'll take that. Not copper. Enriched copper would be awesome. Platinum? I'll take that. Aronium, I'll take that. Oh, they found me! That little tiny healer, he came over. I wasn't far enough away. That son of a gun. All right, what are you? What are you? Thematic. Oh, thermic condensate. I'll take that. That's good money right there. That is enriched carbon. Yeah, that's a good. This is a good depot. I like this. And then Aronium. All right, all of them are good. All of them are good. So now it's time to get the heck out of here. I don't want to deal with the quad. I don't have any upgrades yet, so we can't really mess with them. And I don't think they'll land during a combat, but maybe... Nope, they won't. I think if you're in combat, traitors don't want to deal with that. They're like, nah, 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 Jason, you handle that on your own, buddy. You're on your own. 
9,999 runaway mold is a thousand, two thousand nanites. That's insane, dude. I think uh, 9,999 tainted metal is 18,000 some odd nanites. So, as it's double, it's double. It's one tainted, uh, one tainted metal equals two nanites. So yeah, and I think that tainted metal refines faster than runaway mold as well. It takes forever to ru uh, to refine runaway mold. It takes forever. Whereas with uh, tainted metal, it runs really fast. It's still going to take you a few minutes if you have 9,000, but... Uh... What is this? Oh, no! Did you land? I heard somebody. Maybe they just flew away. Uh, now you were definitely an outlaw. No, they didn't catch me. <laughs> they didn't catch me. Maybe that makes me an outlaw. Yeah, maybe that makes me an outlaw. Because they didn't catch me. Oh, yeah. Er, we're going this way. Let's see what this building is. What is this building? A crash ship, please. A crash fighter. You are just a save beacon. Well, great. Thank you, save beacon. Uh, mod, can you respond to this message on how hard it is to be a mod? I don't know if you uh, if you berate the mods, they might not help you, Hunter. <laughs> so I wouldn't suggest doing that. <laughs> you know, if you want to be uh, smarmy to them, they might not answer you at all. <laughs> uh, Jason, are we going to be able to see you build pink and purple fighter? I wish, dude. Man, if I can get another fighter, I just need one more. I just need one more fighter to scrap. That way I can get my freaking wings or whatever. I think it's wings. So I think I have my engine and my nose ready to go. I just need the freaking wings. So, yeah. I mean, I don't care what the wings are as long as there's no fin on it. <laughs> Even then, I might consider a fin just because I want to get the heck going out of this. Like that guy. If he would have landed, I would have taken that. I'll take that. They have to land. Oh, that's a market. We don't need that. Can't mess with that. Uh, mods, can you respond to this message on how hard? Oh, sorry. I already read that one. I have a total of 36 runaway molds on two bases. I think one stack is refining is about 20 minutes. That's a long time. Holy hell. And you have to refill your uh, your refiners after that because I think they only they only refine for, I think, three or four minutes on a full, uh, on a 100% uh, fuel. So that's another thing to consider. You're using up a lot of carbon or condensed carbon in order to run that mold. So yeah, that's why on a, on extreme mode, runaway mold is not very efficient. If you're going to do uh, nanites, you basically go after larval cores, things like that. You can do them really quick. You know, and they, they take up a little bit of your inventory, but you can knock through them real fast. So you don't have to worry about, you know, 20 minutes of refining something. If I don't have a backpack refiner, again, I'm on fugitive mode. I'm not going to be able to get a backpack refiner either. So I'd have to sit there for 20 minutes with runaway mold and then 9,000 runaway mold would be more than my entire inventory. Yeah, so thank God. Thank God. It's a fighter. Now, hopefully I can f afford this thing. Son of a... 18 million. I don't think I can afford him. Why can't you sell your ship for cheaper, man? Why do I, do I get a discount? Can I get a discount, please? Let's sell some stuff. I don't think I'm going to have enough. Um, yeah, we're going to sell that just to get it out of my inventory. I don't think I can... I don't think I can sell these for any cheaper. 25, 50, 100. Nope, nope. No cheaper on that. No cheaper on that. This one, maybe... I'm still, I'm not going to get close. I'm at 13. Wait a minute. Was it 14? Wait a minute. Was it 14? Oh, no. 
How much was your ship worth? Is it 14? No, it's 18. Okay, I'm not close. I'm not close. It is a B class. That's why it's expensive. It's a B class and it has a lot of inventory room. Mine is only worth five? That's BS. So yeah, I need 18. So I need another 5 million. There's no way I was getting 5 million out of that. Oh my God. Ask him for a senior discount. I dude, I wish they gave senior discounts. I'm not above a senior discount. I will take it. But yeah, there's no way I'm getting 18. And then again, I could exchange, but there's no point in exchanging. I'm trying to get three total ships. If I trade it, I'm, I'm still at two. So I can't, I can't trade it. Oh, I mean, I could, but it doesn't matter. It's not going to benefit me in any way, you know, and I'm, I'm just going to destroy it. So there's no point in wasting the money to buy a ship that I'm going to destroy and get the wings from. God, I'm going to need to get five more million. I appreciate you, but you suck. All right. I just need another fighter. Why is it so hard to give me a fighter that's only worth, you know, only worth the amount of money I have and cool looking? I mean, come on. I'm not asking for much. <laughs> I'm not asking for much. Watch the next landing be an S class. Oh my God. I would be so mad. I mean, it would be cool, but I'm not scrapping an S class. Oh my God. I would, that would hurt my soul. <laughs> To scrap an S class just for the wings or the engine or whatever. Oh lord. Are you a crash ship? You are. Oh, another resource depot. Okay, we can make some more money here. Oh yeah, we can make some money. There's some good money right there. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, Magno Gold! Okay, I'll take that. I'll get some gold out of that. Oronium. Oh, no, no, they found me. Okay, yeah, they, they know where I am now. So no point in hiding now. And silver. I mean, I don't need the silver, but I'll take it. Silver is kind of not worth it, but oh, well, screw it. Uh, hopefully I'll have a pirate land for me. I'll be able to get that knocked out. New no problem. Another depot. There's another building over here. Oh my God. Is this going to be another resource depot? That would be insane. You get three resource depots right next to each other. That would be crazy. Let's see. Let's see. Open this up. Give me... Please give me a shield or like some kind of a protection, a cold protection or nanites. I'll take that too, I guess. And this is a, oh no, it's a shelter. Okay. It's a shelter. So half of our inventory is already gone. We can refine this down to regular gold. We ref refine these down to silver. So that's what we'll do. Let's do that. Oh, let's not do it next to a, uh, a building. I don't want to get caught. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Keep moving. Keep moving. Have any other uh, things around here? Another resource depot? Another building? <laughs> really? I've never been at... What are you doing? Silver is always worth getting, Jason. I mean, yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's not worth it to sell, though, just to keep... Uh, I was on my 40s when the younger workers started asking if I wanted one. What are you... What the... What's going on? I'm trying to get them. Some places only have over 65. Oh, if you want a senior discount? <laughs> oh, senior discount. Dude, I am excited. I am excited. When I get to that... When I get to that point in my life, it'll be so good. Be able to get a senior discount. So... Uh, when you're a, an undead vampire like me, they only give you senior discounts when you're 200. 
And I'm only 173, so I'm not there yet. I'm almost there. So I'm about to be a, a 200. Once you get to 200 when you're a vampire, that's when you get a senior discount. Land for me. Land for me, fighter. Dang it. Yeah, uh, Stewie says, Hey, Jason, how do I start an Atlantid Construct Head Expedition? I don't know how to do the expedition. So you can mod it and get it done, but you're going to have to adjust your save file, do all that kind of stuff, and I don't know how to do any of that. So I don't I, I don't mess with any of that because I don't want to break my save or corrupt my save. But there are probably videos or uh, instructions if you Google it or whatever. You can search for it online, and you can probably find it. But I do not know how to start the expeditions after they've passed. After they're expired. Well, let's do this. We're going to call in our ship. We're going to refine some of our uh, stuff because I can make a whole bunch of silver and gold. So that's what we'll do here. So the Aronium specifically, you can do that and get a whole bunch of uh, silver. Look at that. Boom. Starship. And where is my another Aronium? There it is. Now, each one will give me 250, but if I leave the page, it will glitch out and only give me 150. So that's why I'm not leaving the page. I'm literally staying here because in extreme mode, I'm only allowed to get 150, but it refines down to 250. They definitely need to do an overhaul on this because that's just, it, it breaks the whole mode. But we can do a mango. We'll get a whole bunch of gold out of it. Again, your limit's 150. A lot of these materials will refine down lower or higher than 150, 250. So that's why, and if you don't pay attention, if you leave the page and come back, it will glitch out and give you only 150. So you're losing 100 resources. So that's why I just generally I'll stay in here for a minute. I think that's it for... Yeah, we can... If you try to refine that down, it doesn't give you anything. That's why it doesn't matter. You try to refine down the enriched carbon, again, doesn't give you anything, so you're stuck with those. Those only give you what they give you. But I refined a whole bunch of that other stuff into silver and gold, so let's look at all we have. This. I don't need a whole bunch of this crap. Let's get rid of it. Uh, there it is. Now the comment posted. What is going on here? says, uh, the wrench is ready to go off if that chat misbehaves. What is going on here? <laughs> what is happening, says? My comment didn't post. That was strange. How did, how is your comment not posting, says? You, you were mod. You're, did you block your own post? <laughs> uh, look at all that silver. Oh my god, yeah, look at all the silver. Look at all the gold we got. Yeah, we're good. So there's a hundred thousand, fifty-five, fifty-five. So yeah, these stacks of silver are not they're fifty-five versus a hundred versus hundred and fifty. So we have you know, four hundred. Yeah, we're okay. Well, let's keep going. We cleared out my inventory, right? Yep, my inventory is clean, so my ship has all the stuff in it now. Let's get going. Oh wait a minute. Excuse me. I don't have any batteries. Oh, no. We better find a cave. I don't have any batteries. That's not good. Is this a cave? Nope, just a hole. Just a hole. So in order to find a cave, sometimes you can look on the ground and you look for subterranean relics or animals that are in the ground. So this is a cave. And sometimes you can get a weird glitch through the wall like that and see that there's a cave there. There we go. Or if you find if you find under underground animals, you know they're in a cave. So there you go. Look at these cool little blobs. Uh, Saz is a mean one. <laughs> what? Oh, 
No way. No way. Hazardous flora. Let's get some more cobalt. I need cobalt for batteries. That's why I'm doing that. Oh, I'm getting poisoned, so we're going to back out of that one. Uh, so for the Atlantid multi-tools, do I need planetary charts for the monolith, that is? I mean, you can do that. You can also, if you want to do it the easy way, put down a uh, Exocraft rover. If you have an antenna in your rover, it will scan for monoliths for you. But you can also just use a chart. You just have to find a monolith. Find a monolith, and it should have an Atlantid multi-tool on it. If you're in a Corvax system, and you've uh, reached all the requirements for the autophage. You cannot see it. Like, right now, I couldn't see it in this save because I have not reached the autophage. So I could not see it. Even if I saw even if I went to the right place, I would not be able to see it until you activate the autophage. Specifically, you need an item on your uh, a scanner on your multi-tool for it. Uh, not mean, and definitely give more warnings than most. Yes, you do, Sans. You're you're a nice mod. You're a good mod. You're an awesome mod. Uh, maybe same approach, change time, and go offline on your console. You could try that. Could try that. I don't know if that works 100%. I think they've patched that out recently. There we go. We got a whole bunch of batteries again. There we go. That should be enough for a while. And we can refine this ionized cobalt down into regular cobalt as well. Get some sodium out of here. Uh, got autophage without doing the trace of metal. Really, Stewie? As far as I knew, the autophage needed a trace of metal to be done. Because that was the problem that a lot of us had when the autophage first appeared. Is that we couldn't get them to activate and we're like, what the heck? That is because, like, on my main save, my new save, I didn't do the Trace of Metal yet. And so that was a weird, you know, a lot of people ignore it because they didn't do any settlement stuff or anything like that. Maybe they changed it. Maybe they modified it to where now you don't need to do the settlement stuff. I don't know. Oh, it was my first warp after finishing the main storyline. I mean, nice. Heck yeah, dude. If it works, it works. That's all that matters. You are not a fighter. Do not land. Go tell your fighter buddies to come back, though. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah, maybe I should make some batteries here. Oh, yeah, we need some, uh, uh, some, uh, ferrite dust. So let's do that, too. Oh, pure ferrite, not gonna work. I need to get my advanced mining laser as well, so we definitely need to find another crashed ship. That's the only really easy way to get it. I mean, you could find it at, like, a random, uh, multi-tool kiosk. A uh, random multi-tool, like, at a pirate system would, might have it. But the easiest way is to just find a crashed ship, and then they'll have an upgrade uh, blueprint in the, uh, what's it called? The distress beacon. Let's go over here. Let me pop this. Going night. Oh. 
Oh, wait. Let's do this. All right, I guess we'll do that. We'll do that. Make sure I'm all topped up. Oh, my God. These sentinels. Leave me alone, sentinel. Give me my oxygen here. And you are a just a save beacon. Well, that's useful. Fighter! Fighter! The 13! I can I can afford you! I can afford you! Though every time I can afford one, they don't land. The rules are in the video description. Yes, yes. If you're looking for the rules for a fugitive run, the one that I'm doing, again, you don't have to do it this way. If you want to modify the rules, go for it. However you want to play the game, whatever way is fun for you, that's how you should play it. The rules I'm currently using are down below. If you want to use those rules, awesome. If not, if you want to modify them, awesome. Do that too. So yeah, those are the ones I'm going by, the ones down below. And we try to err on the side of caution. So if there's something not in the rules, we try to think about it in the the way that a, a fugitive would. We're doing a role-playing uh, run. So how would a fugitive approach it, like, to be safest? Like, you know, when it comes down to, well, should you talk to an alien? Well, probably not. You know, even if it maybe possibly not. We're not going to do it just because we want to we wanna be safe and not get caught by the authorities. Uh, didn't do the settlement things as well. I come from concrete, No Man's Sky. Build, uh, pieces. Wonder if they are even worth it with a couple of bills already on the table. I have no idea. No idea. There's some data structures over here. There we go. We get, maybe get some uh, drop pods. Come on, drop pods. Yeah, I got one, it looks like. I got one out of there. So I got five nav data. We don't need that. But we got some drop pod. That's good. Done and done. There we go on that. So I think we're good. Not seeing any buildings up. Oh, look at that buried mineral formation down there. Excuse me, big one. Oh! Unknown grave! This is number three! We might have all five glyphs before we even leave the system. Are you serious? I am loving this. This is number three! Oh my god. This is the... I think this is the best luck I've had for Graves on any Fugitive run I've ever done. It is crazy. This is insanely good. Like, it helps we're on a mount... or on a moon. So they're all, uh, closer together, so you don't have to run as far between them. But yeah, dude, I am excited about that. Hey, girl. If I can only get a freaking uh, fighter ship to land for me that I can afford, that would be awesome. Sweet! Getting that Beeble game luck. Uh, yeah, Beeble grave luck. Yes, dude. It'll be kind of nice. I'll be able to get this done pretty quick. Because remember, we need five. So I'm up to three. This is number three right here. We just need two more after this. And we are set. We still need to build our ship, though. Don't, don't forget. We have to build it. Because even though we get to the center of the galaxy, we still need to travel to it. And in, in order to leave a system, you need to have a custom-built ship. Let me have your beautiful glyph. Thank you. And they give you an upgrade. It's a random upgrade. I could get something good out of it. I don't know. So what are we going to get? We got a uh, prepackaged neural stimulator. Okay, I'll take that. It's a B-level upgrade for my uh, my jetpack. I'll, I'll take that. That works. We'll just do that just because. Boom. 
So yeah, that's number three. Looking around for oh mutant plant. We don't need mutant plants. So I don't even think I can mess with the mutant plants. I think you need an advanced mining laser for this, but I'm not positive on that. Oh no, I can, but it, you just get radon. Radon's not worth it. You can't sell it for a lot, so not worth it. You land for me? No? Oh, and you were a fighter? No, you were a hauler, so I don't need you. No, never mind. We're good. Keep on going, buddy. I don't need your hauler. It's too expensive. Let's look around here. Let me look at the uh, chat. I need 16 to get to the Sentinel ship. Yeah, I mean, in order to get to everywhere, you need all 16 glyphs because you don't know which ones you're going to need. But if you want to just rush to the center, you really only need two or one. But... For the challenge, we didn't want to make it too easy because it's easy to find one glyph. And not easy, easy, but pretty easy. But in order to find five, that is time consuming. That's why we kind of set it to five. We want to make it a little bit difficult to get to the center. Give me a cool upgrade. Got a launch fuel. <laughs> All right. I mean, that's not an upgrade, but I'll take a launch fuel, I guess. There we got some more buried tech. Let's look around here. Any more graves? You want to give me a couple more graves while I'm here? No? All right. Let's keep heading north. So someone put down a uh, communication station. Oh, one of you guys is a fighter. You want to land for me? Right there, that fighter, you want to land? Of course you don't. Of course you don't. Now, I still, I don't know exactly how to make uh, ships land. I don't know if there's a way to make them land. There's always a theory that if you uh, stand still for long enough, a ship will land near you just because you know, they want to see, make sure you're doing okay and kind of, uh, you know, give you the option to buy a ship if you want to. But I mean, I can't stand here forever because I'll die. But we could flatten this a little bit. Let's see. Let's see if I flatten it and make it more inviting. Maybe uh, one of these illegal uh, traders will uh, outlaw traders will land for me. Come on. Uh, I don't understand how you can find them so easy, dude. This is the luckiest it's ever been for me, Alex. I've done, like, I did a fugitive run that was, like, 15 hours long. I did it for 15 hours, and I found two. <laughs> so the fact that we've done two streams and I've found three of them already, that is super lucky. Now, again, you can, you can increase your chances by going to a moon. Remember, if you go to a moon, they are very, very, they're smaller compared to a planet, but... They contain the same amount of buildings, and uh, an, uh, a grave is considered a building, just like a ship is considered, excuse me, a building. So there's less area for them to spread out. So they are technically closer together. If you're looking for any kind of thing like that, always go to a moon. Moons are way easier to look for stuff. They're all bunched together because there's such a small space for them to share. Whereas, like, on a big planet... You have a lot of surface area to spread out. So all the buildings, all the stuff is going to be way far apart. So that's the advantage you get. Another thing to do is if you want to uh, limit what you can find, go to an airless planet. You can find crashed ships on an airless planet. And they are one of the few things. On an airless planet, there's no normal buildings. So you will run into more of the just general... Um, Nobody wants to land for me? Well, screw you guys, too. You're going to find crash ships. You're not going to find normal buildings as much on an airless planet. 
On an anomaly uh, planet, there are no crash ships, so that's a good thing to keep in mind. No crash ships on an anomaly planet. Not even sentinel crash ships. So there's those kind of things you can keep in mind to kind of give yourself an advantage or a disadvantage. If you're on an anomaly planet, you're never going to find a crash ship, so <laughs> there's no point in looking. Uh, hello, Procrastinator. Hopefully you're having a good Friday, man. How far away am I? Oh my god, I forgot I don't have any fuel in my ship. I didn't refuel it, you idiot! Well, it's a good walk back to my ship. I totally spaced out that I didn't fuel up my ship before I left. Oh my god. At least we didn't get too far away. Uh, now, if we got too far away, I would just do this. I would call in... Oh my god, I can't call in that one either! Son of a gun! Oh, well, I'm double screwed, so yeah, we definitely have to go back. I did not double check my other crash ship did not have fuel in it. Son of a gun! Well, that's fun. <laughs> Pay attention to your fuel. I hear you guys. Where are you at? There you are. Land, land, land. Dang it. So yeah, at least it's not that far. It's not that far. It's a good five minutes. Not technically five minutes. Because whenever they give you this distance, they only give it to you when you're walking. But if you jetpack boost like this, you actually go faster than your run. So there's no way. Yeah, see? Boom. Just blasting through that. That really stings. Sometimes it bees like that. Yeah, dude. 100%. 100%. That's okay, though. It's not, not as bad as it could have been. So that's good. And the You're procrastinator! Hey, oh, it didn't speak for you. Oh, did I set that limit wrong? I probably did. Dang it! The procrastinator says, did you enjoy Planet Crafter? Absolutely. It was a awesome, awesome afternoon. It was me, Beeble Bum, Heather Silvermist on, on Wednesday. We played Cr Planet Crafter in co-op. It is a blast. So it's been a while since I've played. It was awesome going back and jumping into the game again. It's not completely overhauled, so if you've played it before, it has a lot of similar beats. What they've done is they've kind of modified a little bit of the uh, beginning of the what you need to do and some of the recipes, but it's overall the same beats. The big changes are at the end game, so when you get towards the uh, total terraformation of a planet, of the planet, that's when things change. We have fish now, we have animals now, so it... They've added a lot to the end game. There's a lot more biomes, so there's more... The map is larger and there's more area, more stuff in the map, which is really, really cool. So yeah, I'm loving Planet Crafter. They added more music to it. So cool. Nobody wants to land, huh? I could afford, afford that one, and I could afford that one. Both of those fighters I could have bought, but they didn't want to land for me. Sentinel, I want to hear it. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, we're gonna. Ha I'm gonna have to call it here uh, because I gotta get ready. I gotta make some uh, dinner and stuff for me. But, however, or whatever you want to call it, we are definitely gonna be raiding. I think Flowery or maybe Ricey. Hopefully, one of them is still streaming. No, are they not streaming? Th did he stream today at all? I don't think he did. No, Ricey did not stream today. What about Flowery? Flowey streaming? He's not streaming either? Oh, you guys are killing me. Well, he, none of them are doing... They're not doing community night tonight, I guess. But we do have KJ streaming. So KJ is streaming No Man's Sky. If you guys are sticking around for No Man's Sky, definitely hang out. Because KJ and Lava are playing No Man's Sky. They are specifically doing the Orbital Live. Okay, so they're going to be looking for ships and stuff today. So hopefully you guys... Uh, what does it say? You guys looked like you were having fun. Oh, yeah, dude. It was fun. It was super fun, dude. Sorry, you just have to keep streaming. Yeah, I know. Exactly. I gotta keep going because I gotta go until Ricey gets on. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. Very much appreciated. 07 for everyone who hit the like button. Thank you so much. Everyone who donated through uh, Super Chats and things like that. Procrastinator. Awesome. Carmen. Thank you very much. Michael and Obi-Wan Kenny. 
all of you thank you so very much and we will be raiding uh kj she is playing no man's sky right now there looks like they're looking for ships to scrap to build if you're looking for any kind of building there you go she has you covered so let me uh, link it in the live chat for you so in the live chat right now there's a link if not i'll see you guys on monday with some valheim i'll see you guys then but if not, hopefully you guys have a uh, safe weekend. We're going to make a fighter, obviously. So we are going to make a fighter eventually when they let me buy a freaking fighter. So I'll see you guys over at KJ stream. And thank you guys so much for hanging out. It was freaking awesome today. We had a lot of luck, a lot of awesome progress in our run. So I'll see you guys over there.